So, you got me. Are you continuing? For so, after the process, I was a little sick. You know, I went back into the streets and partied up. And I did that for a good about two to three weeks. And then, uh, and then I just messaged her. And I really didn't expect her to answer. And she did. Listen, hey guys, welcome to Little Blackbird 91. We are giving you guys a uh, live uh, on Ready to Love. Listen, my voice gone a little bit. I was at a theme park today, so my voice has gone a little bit, so forgive me. But today we are talking to you about Reunion Part 2. Yes, I'm ready to take it to another level today. The show is going to be an amazing one. When the super panel come on, your favourite super panel, when they come on, they're ready to give their unadulterated opinions, thoughts, dissections, analysis, okay? All right, and, a, and personal thoughts towards this particular show. But that's going to be in about an hour's time, all right, guys? So I'm going to hold it down until they come. But I've got my own thoughts because I didn't get to do a video today. So I thought, let me put all my thoughts out first um and you know get my opinions across as well listen i need everybody to come inside okay everybody on this i need everybody to come inside okay all right i need everybody to come inside my voice gone so bad i was screaming so bad at one point i was on a pass out on these roller coasters i promise you okay i'm even still you know what? i'm too i'm too old for roller coasters my body's still feeling the aftershocks of the of the of the you know what i mean like i was in the car after and as i was going in the car out the car was going on bumps i could feel the every time i was going i was like i'm too old for this i can't do these roller coasters all right and just like i'm too old for roller coasters the cast is too old to be lying about the things that they're doing okay just like i'm too old for roller coasters at this point my body my body telling me you're too old okay all right all right to be shot to like this okay to be going on you know certain hundred foot drops and stuff is the cast are too old okay they are too old all right okay they are too old okay <laughs> all right all right they should not be lying and everybody is a liar on this show it seems you know what i mean like we had laron lying we had will lying we had uh william lying a little bit we had um you know um you know, we had uh, 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 Alexis lying. We had, um, who else is lying on this situation? Patrice lying. Um, you know, just way too many lies were being told. You know, Chaz lying, Vanessa lying, uh, Dominique lying in some sense as well. Like, uh, because we, well, I say lying, let me be very, very much more, more specific. You know, a little bit more deceptive because we didn't know that Dominique um and v vanessa been dating all the time and then we didn't know that patrice was still dating william even though she was with um alonzo what's going on there i don't know um you know my we got sorry not my we got laron with the with the group chat which we saw from will but then will also was doing the nonsense too in his group chat he didn't tell us that situation but yes production's lying as well i mean shoot everybody is lying at this particular point um and let me just tell this now listen we it, it it doesn't help the show when everybody's lying you know what i mean like it doesn't help okay um and also because we don't get the fullness of the show we don't get the fullness of you dating we don't get a full understanding of what's going on with you dating so look hey <laughs> oh man uh it's a lot right now it's a lot right now right so we're going to discuss it. We're going to get into it. We're going to break it down. Um, and we're going to go further. Listen, we've got almost 400 people in the room, which means y'all love what we do around here. Okay? You love what we do. And I know the numbers are going to go crazy today. I'm expecting a thousand of y'all to come in the room today. Come on in. Okay? Even if you don't want to chat, come on in. Okay, when the panel comes on in an hour's time, it will go members only because you know why? I can do it because I can do it. It's my show and I want to I want to make the show a, a much more better place for us. Okay, all right. All right. So listen, make sure you do me one thing. Like, share and subscribe to the channel um, and make sure you guys are locked in to today's show as well. Um, very, very interesting. Um let's break it down all right okay and you know you know it's a it's an interesting situation that's been happening on this season um before we get to that point you know i i think i, I saw not even think i saw a uh comment um about from mika 
on Chloe Johnson's uh, uh, page and she was like, actually they had food at the reunion. They had pasta, they had this, they had that, mac and cheese or whatever they were having. So there was a look, there was food they had, they had a lot of food. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, was someone, someone might not have been telling the truth. Was there food or was there not food? Um, you know, at a reunion because Mika said there was plenty of food upstairs. They had a whole buffet tray of food there. You know what I'm saying to you? But someone said that there was no food at all when they came on this show. Just, I mean, listen, I'm just saying, they said they had, there, there was no food at all. You know, there was like, you know, three old doves between five, you know, how many people, whatever, doing the, the miracle of Jesus. So, you know, apparently there was food, you know, um, I don't know. So, you know, I don't know, uh, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Someone, someone, someone's lying then. Someone's lying. Again, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This season, someone, and then someone's lying then. You know what I mean? There's always someone lying then because there was apparent food at the reunion. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So someone's lying. Um, but we do know, obviously, at the reunions, the food isn't great. You know what I mean? So the food isn't great. You know what I'm saying to you? Um, so listen, like I said, this whole show, okay? A whole season, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit mad. You know what I mean? All right, listen. Let's get into the show. Let's get into the show. Okay, all right. Let's get into the show. All right, first of all, let's deal with the first initial part. I want to go back to the very beginning. Let's talk about some of the things that were happening. I mean, my last meal, like the last of women receive it. Right. Does it, does it make you feel like I need to maybe change up my approach to this? Um... Maybe tweak it a little bit. Yeah, just, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> you know, I'm just a... First one first, let's deal with Lamar. Can I be honest with you? Um, again, I'm not sure... I'm not sure. I don't, I don't like describing it in a particular bad way. I want to describe it in a, in a better way. Um, but I was conf not confused, but I was looking at the situation between Lamar and Tommy, nephew, nephew Tommy. And you guys saw my interview with Lamar. I spoke to him about his behavior. Okay. All right. I spoke to Lamar about, you know, the fact that his behavior is not conducive. It's kind of dangerous. Um, you know, and it was kind of in a, in a way where, um, it was, y y you're crossing boundaries, right? Held him accountable, even though, you know, I know he wasn't trying, he doesn't necessarily all the way get it. Um, and the reason being is because when you cross people's boundaries, we're in a very dangerous territory, right? Now, I feel like every season we miss the opportunity to educate the audience. I feel like every season we miss an opportunity to be able to educate the audience okay and what that means is this would have been a great time to have a conversation with him and not laugh it off because what he's doing is actually breaking people's uh uh, uh consent and breaking people's boundaries okay so when you are in a when you when there's a clip i think we saw and i'll, I'll see if i can get it where he was talking with april uh on the sh on the when they showed her back part of the show and he tried to kiss her on the neck or whatever Man. hold on and it was before he had ever asked her to do so 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 this was this was actually breaking someone's boundaries right and this is very dangerous no matter how much you want to look at it no matter how much you look at it it's a dangerous place you can't go ahead and kiss somebody without actually having a signal that you can actually do so so i don't find it funny when we laugh this off because we're in a very dangerous position Right? This is how things get skewed. I think this is, I know we talk about Jonathan and his particular behavior. Um, and we'll, we'll go back and revisit Jonathan's situation as well. But, um, you know, this, 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 this for me is, is dangerous. Right? I think, like I said, blind rage is dangerous. Someone tripping someone's boundaries is dangerous. Um, you know what I mean? Like, these, these behaviors for me are lead to heinous crimes yeah so you know when when you when you are able to get ahead and you want to can kiss someone on the neck or whatever and you know for sure you ain't even got that kind of relationship with them yeah and so for me personally this should have been a situation where they should have they should have got involved immediately he should have had the time to be on the show 
I've said this already. Right? He shouldn't have been on the show. Once that happened, he should have been off the show because you've done too much. Right? You've done too much. And we have to talk, we have to talk about this as a regular thing because, and this is why I really find it frustrating. Several times I've heard people when I've interviewed them, they've said, oh, but it's a TV show. I wouldn't do this in real life. I want to let you know when people start saying it's a TV show, I wouldn't do this in real life. It is not true. Right? Men have said this. Women have said this. When, they, when you interview them, they're like, but it's a TV show. No, 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 no. These are your behaviors. Whether I'm on a TV show or whether I'm in real life, I'm not crossing anybody's boundaries to kiss them on the neck and I haven't got that consent from them. Right? So you saying that you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you saying that you wouldn't do this to somebody, you saying that, oh, I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't uh, uh, behave like this, you know, this is real life. And so you are crossing people's boundaries intentionally. You are not only just a menace to society, you're dangerous. Right? Yeah, he did say that at the reunion. He did. He did, Jay. Yeah, he did. He said, he said it was him at the reunion. Um, and, and that for me personally meant that why are we allowing this behavior to continue? Why are we not checking it? Why are we, why are we not checking that behavior at the door? Why are we not pulling up Lamar and telling him, this isn't about you doing behaviors that are not working. I'm not even talking about the sexual jokes. I'm talking about the fact that you go beyond, the, you go beyond that spec. Right? You know what I'm saying to you? So at that point, that's why I was expecting like, the show to kind of be like, let's really have an opportunity and call him out and talk to him about his behaviors. Right? Let's, let's, let's have a real conversation. Of, that should have been a real conversational moment. Like, let's call him out. Let's show that this is in, inappropriate behavior. Right? This is, this is dangerous. But we, I said this to him, you know. So, yeah. Let's then go on to... Uh, Let's go on to uh, the situation with Jonathan and uh, Alexis. Um, I want to be able to also, hopefully, let me see if I can get it. Because I really want to be able to, um, I want to say shout out to Chloe Johnson. Because she opened my eyes to something. Um, if you guys haven't watched her, she broke down my my interview with Alexis. But it was a part that she broke down and I, I said... It was such an excellent breakdown because she actually opened my eyes to the Alexa situation even more. Um, and it actually saddened me a little bit, actually, when she broke it down even more that there was more to that situation with Jonathan and Alexis. And I was like, yo, this is kind of sad. Um, and I want to be able to play the part where it was that she said it because she broke down saying she broke down the part where Alexis was telling a story about her and Jonathan's situation and how her and Jonathan's situation um she was describing how she actually felt in that moment and it was like I felt so bad I was like yo Alexis was properly violated by Jonathan but you're defending him and then calling out Koshia and um it was such a great breakdown I want to be able to bring it to the to the foreground because it, it really did open my eyes um, to the situation. I'll, I'll see what I can put for you guys. Let me just get a clip. Because uh, it, was, it, was, it was sad to him. And I was like, this is actually really sad. Like, looking at it from this perspective, it's political. So obviously, Jonathan on the show was doing his piece. I did. Yeah, he did. Those are muscles I still have to rework. And, you know, still better on, you know? Think of, you think if he'd have been open up about his past, Okay, so that's a Mika part, my bad. So that's a, that's a Mika part, my bad. That's the wrong part. Um, uh, the, uh, to be fair, I, I, I'll, and I'll be, I'll be open about this. I think to be fair, Jonathan has apologised, has acknowledged his wrongs, um, and has apologised both on the screen and off the screen, right? So I respect that, you know what I mean? You, you know you did wrong. Um, and so, you know, if, you, if you've acknowledged that, 
you've apologised to the person and you've apologised on TV and off camera, I really do appreciate it. I think that's, that has to be said, right? Um, but the, 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 and so it's less about even Jonathan in this instance, it's actually more about Alexis because the way that she was uh, going, the way that she explained the Koshia situation, even when I was interviewing her, she really, she still stood 10 toes down on the Koshia situation, right? She stood 10 toes down on the Koshia situation by not, by still highlighting the fact that Koshia was being sexual and that's why she got what she got in return. And it's like, you've missed it. You know, you've missed it because if you realize, if you realize from your situation, you never asked for Jonathan to be this way. Jonathan did that to you. And you didn't, you didn't, you weren't sexual to him. You, you know what I'm saying to you? So I just felt like, you know what, this, I, it was it was sad to kind of see. I'm going to try and play the clip from Chloe Johnson. Hold on a second, let me get it. It was a really great breakdown and I think it's well worth a listen as well. So shout out to her for the breakdown because I, I was actually really sad. I was like, oh damn, I, I feel bad for Alexis on this point, right? Let me see if I got the right part. On national television, you know what I mean? Like you're painting these guys out to be X, Y, Z, and that is not the case. And the viewers are going to eat this shit up. And it's, and it's not okay. It's not cool. Hold you on. guys, to keep the same mindset that she's supposed to be telling us, she's supposed to be clearing... Hold on, hold on. I think it's a bit later on. Apologies. Hold on. You're acting like you want me to flirt with you. You're acting like you want me to... There we go. Oh, is, 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 is a very sexual person, okay? And it, if I was a dude, I probably would have thought she's trying to get with me at, at a few occasions. You know what I mean? So it wasn't just all that uh, crazy for Alonzo to really ask that. And what I meant by that is if you're not out here putting out this type of energy, then that's not really usually what you're going to get back. You understand what I'm saying? So if you, when I say men know who to play with, if every man is approaching you and rubbing you the wrong way in a sexual way, Let's ask ourselves why. What am I doing to make men think that I want these type of sexual advances? That's all I meant by that. You know? Do Alexis have kids? Do Alexis have kids? I hope she don't have daughters. Because that's dangerous. That mindset is dangerous. This is this this is what it sounds like when they say, "Oh, well, you deserve that because of what you had on. You deserve that because you were outside at three o'clock coming from the club. You deserve that because you had on a crop top. You deserve that because I saw you dancing on that man in the corner over there. So now I feel like you should dance with me over here. You deserve that." All right, let's, I want to get further along because you know I mean? there's a part where she there's a part where she explains it deep. Observe, what would you see? Hold on. When you say different, was... how did he try you, Alexis? This is weird. Felt uncomfortable watching you go through that situation. They felt like he was, he was, you know, he was doing it way too much. From your perspective, I know obviously he's apologized said on the show, but what what describe to us what was happening because obviously he's pulled you onto his lap. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like he's you no. Know, Here we go. Well. Yeah. Um, but he put well, he pulled you onto his knee at first. I think he wanted to go on his knee, I think, and then he kind of pulled you right. more than so, that. So yeah, tell us your your thoughts on that. So the 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 night of the pajama party, with the conversation you saw us having kind of near the pool, um, that was the first time. Uh, that was the first time that um, I had that Jonathan had like verbatim told me like I'm interested, I like you, right? Um, so this was like news to me because I'm like, you like me? Like, since when? I'm seeing you, uh, we've been on dates, I've seen you a couple of times, like, since we started this thing, like, how you like me? Anyway, um, did that, you know, just messing with him. But, uh, uh, we got to talking and that was the first night I realized it. So when we were playing the game, um, I think some, Leron or somebody, I guess the question on the game was like, uh, whisper sweet nothings in your, uh, in your connection's ear or something. And so he kind of gave me that look and I'm like, oh shit, he's like gonna do me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, <clears throat> so he like kind of like picks, like reaches out for my hand for me to like come towards him. So I was gonna like, he was sitting on this like armoire chase type of, you know, deal. 
Um, and so I was going to sit on his lap sideways, like on one leg and kind of just have a flirty moment that way. Right. Mm-hmm. So you sat on his lap. According to your knowledge, <laughs> that's supposed to happen. According to your knowledge, the, the, the way you put it, it seems like if I put myself here, it's okay if you go there. It's crazy. So by her knowledge, at this point, the way she puts it, if you if you give a man an inch, then he can take him. Right? He that's that's it. he just is a, I mean obviously stronger than me. Goes ahead and picks me up and sits me down. Then he kind of whispers like you know just go with it. And so he's now we're in this situation. How I want to react is this way. This way she deeps it, and that's why I actually deep to myself. Can't lie to you. The way she breaks it down on this part. Listen to this part. Really important. Um, this part is really important. Really, really important to what she said. Y'all, I feel like almost, I think I'm like, oh my God, I almost cried. Did she say he whispered, just go with it? I did not hear that before. That's, that's insane. That's insane. And you're defending him. Just go with it. When you're pushing him, saying no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. It's a sad man. And I think when I watched it here, and the reason why I'm doing this, I'm sharing this, is this is actually not a, a this is not against Alexis. It actually isn't against, it's actually really sad when you actually, because once I, when I watched Chloe's breakdown, I was like, nah, it's actually deeper than I actually, it's even deeper, the violation, you know what I'm saying to you? The violation's even deeper, you know what I'm saying to you? This is not about saying, how does she not understand, because she, no, 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 we all know that was for her not understanding, because she's perspective is completely off, but it's actually sad that you actually went through that with Jonathan, right? And there's a part after that where, She's gonna she's gonna play the clip. And I and I even said to myself, I said, I also missed it. Right? Because I didn't I didn't get deeper with it. Okay? Right? It, it it's even deeper. Because I even missed it too. Because when Chloe breaks it down, I'm like, yo, you know what? We should have hopped on that point. You know what? We should have hopped on that point. Because that's a that's a mad thing situation. Right? And it's what is what says is what is said after when she explains it even more. Um, uh, Alexis as well um, where she talks about how she felt like she couldn't do that because she felt like she would go against sorry against the you know the room and didn't want to didn't was thinking about other people and ending the night and that that's pain that's sad that's more than just sad that's that's scary that's painful you know what I'm saying to you right that 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 is not that is not something that we want to encourage. That is not something that is going to be, you know what I mean? Um, uh, regardless of her stance on Koshia, again, regardless of her stance on Koshia, we all agree that her stance on Koshia is nuts. Okay? We all know that the stance on Koshia is nuts. It's, but it's not about the Koshia thing. It's now, baby girl, you are in the same position. You didn't want it. And someone has crossed your boundaries and not only are they crossing their boundaries you actually have to start think you started thinking about people around you in that room rather than yourself do you know what i'm saying to you now that's sad and that's scary that's painful that's hurtful you know what i mean and so when you're defending him i i listen i hear it um let me play a little bit of that clip reaction is no what are you doing I'm, I'm about to slap you know what i mean but this is a, a totally off-putting type situation right where you me go back sorry to probably slap this man you know what i mean that's my natural reaction is no what are you doing i'm, I'm about to slap you know what i mean but this is a, a totally 
off-putting type situation, right? Where you're in a room full of people. If I react badly or overreact in this situation, you know, or slap him or anything like that, this is going to ruin the whole night, the whole energy, the whole move, the game, everything shut down, go home, right? If I take it there, because it looked really bad. You know what I mean? Like, this is obviously unwanted, or I thought it was obvious that I didn't want to be in this situation at this point, you know? But again, Jonathan had, he had that look in his eye. He, 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 uh, he, he had a little bit too much to drink. Um, and so he just wasn't picking up on social cues, I think, in that moment. Um, and so... Um, and so I'm gonna let Chloe. Chloe breaks it down again. Oh, Chloe breaks it down again. Listening to what she's even saying here is even more. It's even more sad because she's saying, you know what, her natural reaction would be to violence. Um, but right now she's afraid of ruining the night for everybody else, and so she's willing to suffer in that moment so that other people can can flourish. Her boundaries now are no longer important, and so. And so it's, again, number one, it's sad again because she couldn't understand Koshia's perspective because she, she's putting herself almost in a different category to Koshia because she feels like Koshia is being sexual. So she did almost, without saying it still, almost feels like, no, no, you, you, you did something to get what you got, right? And so now you're in a position where you have to defend Jonathan. And, I, and I'm not saying she had to run him on the bus. No, I'm not saying she had to run him over in the bus. What I'm saying is that, it's unfortunate. We would have, would, would have wanted you to be able to understand the perspective, okay, of the other woman, Koshia, that her situation, she didn't want those uh, um, advancements. It doesn't matter if she was dressed sexy, if she talked sexy, if she didn't want the advancement, if she didn't want that kind of conversation. When she makes her boundaries known, then yes, it's a violation. And unfortunately now, you're in a situation where it's, it's even more worse for this one because now you don't want to tell anybody anything. You don't want to upset the room. You don't want to upset the, the balance and the status quo. This is really sad. That, that, that's why I said it's not, it's not an attack on Alexis, irrespective of how she felt about Koshia. It's more of like, babe, I, need, I want you to open your eyes. Okay? That this is really, really sad. This is really, this is painful. And you didn't deserve this. And nothing you did deserved that. And nothing Koshia did deserved her boundaries also being crossed. You got what I'm saying to you? Right? Okay? Nothing you did deserved that type of behavior. Yeah, it's just one of those decisions like, do I react how I want to react and ruin it for everybody? Or do I let this this go by let you know bite the bullet and then address this when he's sober and when you know he can fully understand like how um uncomfortable i was in that situation alexis i hope that you are never in a position where you cannot advocate for yourself mm. i really pray that you are never put in a position where you have to choose whether or not to speak up for yourself or to cause a scene You see her energy, you see her face. I really pray that Alexis is never, ever put in a situation where she really feels as though she has to choose the environment over herself. Because this is insane. And the commentary that I wanted to give, I can't even give, I can't even give because it's, 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 this is, this is, this not in my league. Like this, this not in my league. This, this not in my league. And I'm, I'm triggered. I'm triggered. And I'm trying to, <laughs> because I didn't know he said that. And then when you see her express it and she talks about how she can tell she, she didn't want to be in that situation. And she had to make the, the choice of whether or not I say something and shut this whole thing down and everyone goes home and there's no more fun. Or do I just wait till he's sober up and have a conversation later? That's scary. And once again, you put on a cake to defend a man 
who's done this to you because you don't want to tear down a black person. You don't want to tear down a black per a man. You don't want to tear down a black man. I don't want to put that. He got family. He got this, that, and other. In the same breath, tell Koshia that she shouldn't, you, you give off that energy. Like, I am so, so confused. Basically, right. Basically, you were silenced. Exactly. And, and, and there's, there's actually something deeper here. But you know me, I'm going to overanalyze. You know, that, that, that scene at the reunion, part one, where she ends up getting into a fight with everybody around her, this is why it's deeper. Okay? This is why it's deeper. This is why I say that these things are not isolated incidents. When I call people out and I'm trying to say to them, can we look at this because there's a deeper issue going on? I am pressing it because there is danger here because that anger is coming from somewhere. But this also makes sense too now because if you've had the Jonathan situation, now it makes sense you saying when production are suddenly deciding to defend, are, trying, are suddenly protecting black women, this is what you actually mean. Now it makes sense when you're talking about people around you and why you're reacting in the way you are. Right now, now, now it makes sense why you would react the way you would in that situation at the very end when there's men around you. There's a deeper aspect. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Right now, there's a real aspect as to where there's anger. There's a fear there, of course, around the people around you too. Right, but we chalked it up to what alcohol and not and not eating food. There is a deeper issue, which is why I said we need to go deeper because when we leave it at where we leave it. We're not addressing what's really happening to the person. And this is sad. It's not just sad, it's scary. Because you suddenly realize you couldn't advocate for yourself in this scenario. You see, this is why I say we have to look at things deeper. We have to analyze things. Yes, I will overanalyze, but it's because there are things like this happening. So when you didn't defend yourself with Jonathan, maybe you told yourself after, I'm, I'm definitely not going. And because we didn't, and you know, I take accountability on this one. Because we didn't, um, I didn't unpack the Jonathan situation more of her, right? Maybe if we had unpacked the Jonathan situation even more, we might have had a different ending. So I got, I got to be accountable. You know what I mean? If I, if I, if I looked a bit deeper, with the Jonathan situation, had I not missed that aspect of the conversation where I could have I could have pressed in a little bit more deeper, the way that Chloe went in and, and really explained it. I, once again, shout out to Chloe Johnson for a great breakdown. Because when I got to this part of the show, I said, "Oh no, there's something deeper." I didn't even I didn't even deep that all the way. So shout out to Chloe Johnson again, breaking it down. Please go and watch her review. It's a very very good review. Um, I'll put a link in the chat as well because it's a very good review. You won't waste your time. It's actually a really good review. Um, you won't waste your time at all. All right. Um, so there, there's a, there's a, there's a, the, re, the chalking up to alcohol and chalking up to food at that point in time is not the react, it's not the reason why you're reacting the way you react. And, 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 and the reason again, because remember, we've already talked about Koshia and, and how you felt about Koshia. And then you spoke about this Jonathan situation. There's something deeper here, right? And maybe if I had focused more on there and had a bit more of a conversation around that, would have had a different different end to the conversation. And that's on me. You know what I mean? Because I'm the interviewer. That's on me. And I think I was just so sad. And by the time I got to the end of Corey's review, I was like, no, nah, I'm kind of sad. You know what? At the very beginning, yes, or some things I didn't think. I was like, but by the end of it, I'm like, oh, nah. Nah. That's real sad. You know? Nah, that's real sad. And it is sexual. It, it, it would class as sexual assault. Of course, you know, it's, it's sexual assault, you know, um, and yeah, someone said she will be receptive. It's not necessarily to be, it's the, the deeper is slowing the conversation down. It's actually asking questions because when she described the moment where she said he was bigger, he was stronger. There's a part where she gets to where he's, he was bigger. He was stronger. There should have been a question for myself. It should have been. That's on me. I'll, I'll take that one. That's on me. Yeah. Because there's a part where, I, we haven't got to it yet. There's a part where she would have said, oh, you know, he was bigger and stronger. She weighed him up. 
she actually sized him up and that would have been an opportunity to ask questions like okay let's pause here what does that actually mean you know what i mean what do you mean you you, you were seeing him bigger and stronger why would you why do why were you thinking about everybody else right that extra question is what I'm talking about when I say go deeper. It's not about, you know what I'm saying to you? It's always the extra question. And that would have been, um, that would have been, that, that would have been me going deeper. Do you know what I'm saying to you? I did her a disservice in that space by not going, by not asking that extra question because I'm looking at Chloe's reviews, Chloe jo Johnson's review and I'm like, nah, this actually, this is sad, this is painful. You know what I mean? It's sad, it's painful. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily about what your past is is about that situation. Why do you feel that way? You know what I mean? We don't need to know if there's a previous uh, essay. We don't need to know if there's a previous essay. You know what I mean? It's a situation of in that moment, why are you thinking that? Why are you thinking about everybody else? What's 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 in your mind that you think about everybody else? Do you know what I'm saying to you? That 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 because that's a, that's a sad, you know, right? And even if you did go have that conversation with him once he sobered up. I don't like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> Y'all, I'm, I'm, I think we're going to have to end it for the night. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I am disgusted. I thought I was disgusted before. But certain, certain lines, when people say certain things, because if she's saying, no, 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 pushing you, pushing you. And then, then she said, but he had that look in his eye. Yep. He had that look in his eye. And of course, he's bigger than me. He's stronger than me. If you listen to what she said and how she said it, she felt like a victim. Am I right? Or like, am I tripping? Am I reaching? Am I doing too much? Like, the way she described this incident is crazy. It's one thing if he would have did that and she would have been like, Oh, it's just fun. Ha ha. Go with it. Like, it's cool. I wanted to, like, it's all right. Okay. But the way she described the way all of this happened. But did people peep when she said that production did not protect her? She felt violated because they did not tell her she would be the one to send Jonathan home. <sighs> Meaning she felt nervous about everything that had happened. And she didn't want to have to be in his presence again. I, can, I don't know. Because she was sitting there crying. Maybe, maybe she was traumatized. Yeah, um, and, and it was uncomfortable to watch. The guys obviously pulled him off eventually, uh, mm -hmm. pulled you off, sorry, eventually um, as well. Um, obviously, it has to be fair. People would say, well, you know, do you feel like, you know, you gave him some energy that led to that situation, right? For instance, no. you guys were talking about sucking doors and, you know, no. you know, and no. might say, they might say that because obviously you made a comment about Coach Yes. I don't know if you want to mm -hmm. address that point. Um, no, because at no point did I ever give sexual energy to Jonathan. And, and you can ask Jonathan if, by your logic, Alexa, you did. You sat on his lap. However far he decided to take it after that, it's completely on him. But according to your logic, you can't say you didn't give him any type of sexual energy. You sat on his lap. If I ever came off as wanting him to pursue me uh, in a way that would make anybody uncomfortable, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that I just think he had a bad moment that night and people are allowed to have bad moments. Um, and I, I quickly realized that they are going to use this as his, his exit door. Um, and they were just asking me way, just asking me way too often on camera about this situation. And I nailed this man to the cross behind this. And that's really would be completely. Un I ain't gonna say what I wanna say because. So um, again, and the reason why we're talking about this is because it's, it's addressed on the reunion, Jonathan's situation. Um, you know, so this is this is what we're saying, right? Um, and sometimes what people, what, what, when people give a reason for their for a behavior, sometimes they're rationalizing and intellectualizing their re, their behavior because having to really deep what actually happened can be a very scary place to be in. Right? Uh, uh, exactly, Felicia. Right? So sometimes, yes, her saying he's a Q, um, you know, da 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 da, it's, it's, it's a rationalization 
Okay, all right? It's a rationalization. You're rationalizing what happened. Okay? And in order to make it make sense, but the reality of the situation is you are no diff she is no different from Koshia. Unfortunately, her boundaries were crossed by a man who didn't care for the boundaries. Okay? So again, this is not me bashing Alexa, it's actually more of a I'm having some empathy to say, listen, to be in that space, and I want to tell you something, and this is also something I've noticed. And I'm not a therapist, so please, I don't want anybody coming to kill me. I'm not a therapist. I haven't done the research. This is based on what I've experienced with people who have gone through sexual violence, especially men. And I'm going to say something. What I've seen with men, with men specifically, and some women as well, especially the older generation, when they've gone through SV, they tend to be, some of them can be intolerant of other people who have gone through SV. So if they've suffered at the hands of somebody, because they got up and went a along with it, right? And, and, and they, they've accepted it and moved on, quote unquote, moved on. They haven't actually fully dealt with it, but they've quote unquote moved on. Um, what they end up doing is that when someone else says they, they got SV, they're like, oh, just get up and go on with it. Just, just get over it. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's done. There's nothing you can do about it. Get up and go over it. And, and, and so they can end up being almost insensitive to other people who are in that situation. This is what reminds me of Alexa's situation. This, that reminds me of Alexa's situation. I've seen that from older men and older women who have gone through SV and they will tell you, I've gone through that. Yeah, someone touched me when I was younger. Someone did this to me when I was younger. Yeah, so when, it, so when someone comes to tell them, they're like, just, it will, it will pass. Let it go. It will pass. Be okay. Let it go. You know what I'm saying to you? And then they become insensitive to other people in that situation. That's what reminds me of the Alexa situation. Do you get me? So this is about more having more empathy. And the reality of the situation is now that, the, and this is why I said that it's important to have this conversation with the men and why it was important to have addressed this on the reunion because this was a this is a very sad situation shout out to chloe she's in the chat chloe i was just saying to i was just saying to the, uh, everybody that your breakdown especially that that last pit you know um was such a powerful breakdown especially for myself as a man just kind of the way you you broke it down the little you know the little parts and understood how deep it actually was shout out to you chloe for that as well um you know i think it was very good and i played a little bit for the audience as well that you know, um, uh, that 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 was such a, a great breakdown as well. So shout out to Chloe Johnson as well in the chat. Please, um, if you guys are here, make sure you go and subscribe to her channel and subscribe to um, uh, yes, yeah, subscribe to her channel and watch her, her reviews as well, because it really it really opened my eyes to the way um, that it happened. So what I'm, I'm again. Jonathan's already apologized. He's taken accountability for what he's actually done. That, that's not where my issue was lying. My, my issue lying here is that, for instance, Lamar is doing stuff and we are just laughing it off. But this is what happens when you cross a boundary. And that, no, no, don't get it twisted. I can, un, I can also understand that some people have a moment. That, that, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is Jonathan's apologized. He's taken accountability. Cool. What I'm talking about is that this is a great opportunity to have addressed the men so that ma so that any man watching the show, any man who gets an opportunity to see the clip, maybe can have a, a second glance at their behavior and just make sure that you're good. Right? To make sure that everything that you do is consensual, that everything you're doing is within the remit and the bounds of keeping a person in front of you safe. Right? And, and so, yes, Lonzo too, crossing boundaries and doubling down. When people when people do this, we have to. This is what I'm saying. We, when when we do this, you have to you have to be able to be on it. Right. So that's what I'm saying to you. That on the show, this could have been called. This should have been called out because certain men were actually willingly wanting to cross those boundaries, and then calling it something else. Do you know what I'm saying to you? That's why I'm saying that these things are dangerous when we allow them to happen. You know what I'm saying to you? So, but yeah, that, that's, that's why I wanted it to be addressed in a reunion so that it can actually be a call out.
And again, they have the opportunity here, Ready to Love, to, to do this in a way that is even educational, right? Let's say you don't want to, you don't want to blast the men. Fine. You don't have to blast the men. Okay. You don't have to blast the men. You could have educated them in that moment. Do you realize the impact of your behavior? Do you understand how, do you, do you understand where you cross the boundaries is a problem? We laughed off Lamar. Like, let me just go back to you. I want to show you something. We actually laughed off Lamar. Like that, that, that for me was scary. That's why it really got scary. We're saying, Lamar, would you do this again? Uh, you know, and, and, and so and, and so saying to him, no, you, you're off, you're off bounds. Do something. No. I'm I mean, we grown, I get it, but on the first day, no. Let's expedite this. Would you roll with me? You know, and, and of course, I want to make it a sexual question. Is there other things that you can start the conversation with on, on a first time basis? I think that's kind of so old. So they actually questioned, they questioned him in a way. Um, she questioned, they questioned him in a way where it was not educating him on the madness of what he's doing. Right? And this is why sometimes I push boundaries to question people. I did it with Lamar. I did it with Alonzo. I did it with Alexis. When you're having behaviors that are dangerous, you have to push on. Look, sometimes people are not ready to hear it, right? But there are dangerous things that are happening because people are crossing boundaries. Whether it's your anger, whether it's the fact that you're sexual, whether it's the fact that you don't mind, you don't care about people's boundaries. These things have to be pushed because they're dangerous to the, either to the person themselves or dangerous to other people around you. You can't, you can't get away with it because it's going to happen around you to other people, right? So uh, that's why I push Alonzo too, right? And I pushed him for 20 minutes. That's why I push Lamar. Right? These things need to be pushed because people are pushing boundaries and it's getting scary. You know what I'm saying to you? So they missed an opportunity. Yeah. They missed an opportunity. Um, let's move on. Uh, hold on. Uh, and this, this, okay. Really not into it. No, I'm not. I'm not. Let's talk to the one that was wiggling his tongue over there. Let's talk to him. <laughs> What's going on, Zoe? I uh, was a little bit saucy. Okay, sorry. I, I missed the part. Where I wanted it. They started talking. And I don't know if this was how it ran in the show. But this was a bit confusing for me. Because we just had Lamar and Jonathan situation addressed. And then we go into a segment about the sucking of the toes. Now, of course, sucking of the toes is not a violation or anything like that. But again, we've gone into a sexual conversation when we're talking about dating. And I'm like, eh... You know what I mean? I'm like, uh... Did we need to have a conversation about sucking toes? Did we really? It was never that big of a... You know what I mean? Again, did we need to have a conversation about sucking toes? Just stuff like this is just what I'm talking about. It's like, it didn't necessarily need to happen. Like, there were other things I've on the show that could have been addressed. Yeah. It's a mazzoline. It's unnecessary. We, we didn't need that either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? Um, let me get the next part addressing this situation here. Not to mislead anyone in this process. Trace, your connection was with Alonzo. Mm -hmm. What at the time did you see in Chaz that made you wanted to continue to pursue it that late in the process? Well, I love the fact that Chaz had prepared him. All right, so shout out to uh, uh, shout out to um, shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, uh, you know shout out to 
um, to, to, to this segment. Chaz came on to, shout out to uh, Another Round. If you guys don't watch Another Round, I'm going to play a bit of a clip from her so you can go and also subscribe to her. We had Chaz on the live, okay? All right? And uh, it was a very interesting <laughs> situation uh, last night. So if you haven't gone to watch Another Round, you need to go and watch it. We had Chaz on the live. He came up. He answered a few questions. Mm. Yeah. So, listen, let's be honest and real. Can I be honest about the Chaz situation? I'm going to be real. Um, Chaz is slick. He's smart. Okay? Chaz is slick. He's smart. Okay? And he is calculated from one brother to another brother you know what i mean he knew exactly what he was doing and knows exactly how to play the game okay and the ladies also too saw something in chaz so it speaks to it speaks to the ladies okay the ladies gotta hold themselves accountable too because all they saw from chaz seemingly because of money and and the plan and the stability because if you really were deep in him and he's not the only one at fault here uh, one thing i have to agree with chaz is this one thing i must agree with chaz is this he stopped calling rashina he stopped calling patricia pa patricia uh, patrice so if they stop if he stopped calling both of them why the hell were they chasing him Mm -hmm. right if he was not calling Rashina and calling Patrice why the heck were you chasing him okay why the heck were you chasing him yeah really deep it why why why, why were you chasing him if 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 you know that, that he wasn't calling you I have to agree with him you played yourself and we, we said this earlier in the season. Why was Patrice latching herself onto, onto Alonso? I guess maybe maybe production pushed it or something. Maybe production wanted to see more of it. Who knows? Okay. Um, you know, in that particular aspect. Um, and I was like, mm, okay. So that one, I have to agree with him, you know? But Chaz is a very, in, very interesting character. He knows exactly how he plays the game. Um, I think him and Vanessa are mirrors of each other. I think him and Vanessa are mirrors of one another. They saw each other, okay, and they played the heck out of each other. Okay? Yeah? Now, we got to, yes, exactly, we've got to talk about that, JR, because people out here, Patrice and Vanessa, moving wild. Oh, they, they, we have to call them out, and we will, don't worry. Okay? We will call them out. But yeah, um, let me go on to Jay's platform. Jay was on it another round. If you haven't subscribed to another round, please do. Um, you know, I'm going to make this bigger. I think I asked him. Okay. Wait, hold on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Do you have a here way that you're going to share it? Are you going on a particular interview? Or, or what's, what's your plans to actually share this information? So I got a production team that's looking at the text messages, some voice calls, um, some recordings. They're going to kind of clean it all up and organize it. Otherwise, it's just going to be an indefinite recording that you guys would have to hear. Okay. Okay, so what's happening here? Oh, boy. Oh, boy is about to launch a full... I'm, I'm talking about a full-on assault on Vanessa. Okay, he's about to go on a full-on assault on Vanessa because Vanessa. I don't know what Vanessa said. I can't. I don't know. I think she made a comment on her platform that I think he said that financially hurt him, um, and so he's suing her. <laughs> he said he's suing her, <laughs> so he's going to get a whole production team. To bring up, he's going to bring a whole production team to clear everything. He's going to do video. He's going to do audio. He's going to do, he, I mean, he's going to do a whole bunch of things. 
Oh, okay, it was a coach. He's, oh, sorry, so in the coach. I apologise. Thank you for the correction, Jay. It's a coach that's being sued. Apologies, thank you. I don't want to be sued for saying the wrong person to be sued. You got what I'm saying to you? So thank you for clearing that up. I apologise. I retract my statement because I don't want to be sued. Um, it is a coach that Vanessa worked, that Vanessa does videos with that's being sued. I apologise. I retract my previous statement that I made. Okay, all right, at 2.17 a.m. UK time. Kojo Darkwa retracts his statement. I don't want to be stewed. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be joining his lawsuit that he has <laughs> against Jazz. Okay. All right. All right. So, you know, um, he's making a lawsuit. So, um, against, uh, uh, against the coach. Okay. Um, and so he's going to make a whole production. Okay. He's going to, he wants, cause he wants to, and I'm not, do you know what it is? I get it as well. Like I do get part of it, which is he wants to present all the, uh, all the evidence in a particular thing and let me tell you this now Chaz told us allegedly won't save you so me saying allegedly won't save me you know what I mean I'm retracting my statement okay okay he said allegedly won't save you <laughs> so I'm not trying to do an allegedly I've retracted my statement it was wrong okay okay <laughs> all right <laughs> he's suing the coach he's not suing Vanessa so we're not doing allegedly here with Chaz <laughs> don't play with him <laughs> <laughs> but what i will say is yeah in my humble opinion is that i just felt like this was too much but if he gen but if he really was financially impacted by this if he can prove okay that he was financially impacted then that's a different situation i'm not going to argue with anybody if they're financially impacted then i'm not going to um uh you know uh then i'm not going to you know, argue with him on that point, right? But I'm not going to lie. He called Vanessa a narc on the reunion. Okay? And I said to myself, <laughs> and I told him on the live, I said, yeah, bro, I can't lie to you. Like, you called her a narc. So, <laughs> I, 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 and my thing is this, usually people meet their mirrors. Like, narcs usually meet empaths, people that don't have very good boundaries, who are looking to be validated by... Um, or oh, sorry, it's not say empaths alone. Usually, narcs end up meeting codependent people, people that who want to be validated by someone else. So much so, they make their identity the other person. And a narc usually meets codependent people. Usually, not always. People are not always narcs. Don't always meet codependent people. They're people who have not been, you have not codependency at all, and have met narcs. But I'm just saying, there's a lot of people that who are codependent who end up meeting narcs because that person wants to have their whole in identity crafted by the other person, right? Now, of course, I mean, I think Vanessa also too told us some lies as well. So let's be honest. Um, you know, I think they met. They, I think they met each other. Okay, and they saw eye to eye. Godzilla and King Kong saw each other. But the fact is, Chaz is willing to go the furthest route. And for me, this is why they're calling us men sassy. This is what I'm saying to you, that they, they're calling us men sassy because this situation, I don't think it should have gone this far. But if he was financially, if he was financially, um, if he was financially uh, impeded, then, uh, you know, I can't, I can't uh, fight on that. But he knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, Exactly. You know what I mean? He knew exactly what he's doing, right? But Kojo, Sounds like exhibit A through Z. Yeah, there's going to be some of that. Kojo, I'm no white knight. I don't know where you got that from. I was actually disappointed. You usually, you're like, you're usually spot on, but you were quite off there. What's up? What's up, Chaz? The white knight comment? Now, this one impressed me because he said I was usually right, but he didn't like the white knight comment. And I said, and I explained it to him, you're a white knight. <laughs> <laughs> you behave like a white knight when you do certain behaviors. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, Chaz, you do move like a white knight when you do what you did. You know what I mean? And I explained it to him on there as well. So, um, but yeah, no, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, and my thing is, again, um, I think Chaz calling out Vanessa. I think it, I, I was like, mm, you know, he explained the whole, uh uh you know uh, the whole petrified rose situation elsa gathered him up real nice you need to go and watch it i'm not going to play to it but you need to go watch it because it's actually really good um i don't know if there's well, uh let me see if I can I do grace, personally and i think hindsight it makes the situation with you trying to counsel laron look a little fake 
Okay. That's all that, that's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Because LaRon needs a lot of counsel, even to this day, the way he's carried himself with this Maya situation and not taking down pictures. If you're cool with LaRon, I hope I hope you told him that the way he's carrying on is not good. I hope so. I have, have to confront me. Yeah, but yeah, so and he, he took the pictures down. It took him a long time though. Okay, you just said he wouldn't take him down. He did take them down. See, I, I, I'm pausing it there. I'm pausing it there. This, this, you know, I didn't talk much in that live, and I, it's because I, I can see you. You know what I mean? That I don't need to. I can see you, and that's why he didn't like the white knight coming. But I can see you, right? Because what did listen to? Listen to how he challenged Seaway in that moment, and it will tell you a bit about why he does what he does when it comes to Vanessa. Okay, he immediately, as soon as she said that he wouldn't take the photo down. No, it's true. He wouldn't take the photo down. Laurent wouldn't take the photo down, right? Laurent wouldn't take the photo down. So it's not a lie. It's not a lie that he wouldn't take the photo down because in reality, he didn't take the photo down. It took a long time for Laurent to take the photo down. And then look what Chaz did. Instead of saying, yo, you're right. He says, yeah, but you just said, he said, oh, but he did take the photo down. And you just said, you t that he didn't take the photo down. See, that's where Chaz lives, right? That's where Chaz lives. And see, when you can see someone like Chaz and you know how they move, you disengage and you fight, you, you serve from the outside. You don't get into, you don't get into, uh, uh, into a, t a tennis match at the net. If you go at the net with Chaz, he's going to always spin it. You don't play Chaz from the net. You play him from the baseline. Yeah, so that you can stay outside of it, right? Because he wants to muddy you up in a game of serving and volleying. No, 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 my brother, serve. I'm hitting it from the baseline, and I'm gonna stay outside from the baseline. You're getting forearms and backhands. Okay, I want you to. I'm gonna stay outside of it because if I get into you and I stay in there, you're gonna try and muddy it up. No, 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 no. We ain't gonna play that game. I'm outside. Right. So this is what I'm saying about this is what I'm saying about, you know, this is he will always try to spin it. Um he always trying to always trying to spin it. So yes, him on the reunion, he was trying to spin it. You know? He's trying to spin it. So yeah. Um that situation there, you know what I mean? I was like but shout out to Jay as well. If you haven't gone to her channel, let me uh, put a little clip, um, a little link in there as well. Please join her um as well. Okay, uh, make sure you guys subscribe to her channel. Great job! She managed to get the fact that she managed to even get um, uh, Chaz on there. Great job again, once more to another round. Make sure you guys also go and watch that. Um, that's an exclusive, you know what I mean? So, and she managed to get that and bag that. So, shout out to um, uh, another round for that as well, um, as well. So, because he actually came up. That's what he actually did. He actually came up and, and started speaking, you know. But I, I intentionally didn't want to ask no questions. I was like, no, I'm not asking no questions, really. But if you ask me, I can I can ask you. <laughs> if you ask me, I can ask you. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So that's 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 that situation. All right. In a few minutes, we've got the panel coming up now. In a few minutes, because um, we gon we gonna get this show. Show started with the panelists and stuff. Look, if you are not, um, if you are not a member, please get the membership because it will go members only. Um, you know, we appreciate everybody here, but we want to make sure it goes members only when we're talking to the crew. Okay. Um, uh, you know, so this is a, this is a, uh, it's gonna be an interesting conversation. Uh, later on today, ch -ch 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 I'll let it play a little bit whilst I'm doing a little bit of things behind the scenes. Eventually. Hey, why aren't you guys on video? I said I look like Don King. That's what I said. I okay. said that before you came up here. I said you could come on off camera. We're not on camera. Oh. No, I don't mind it. I'm at the supermarket. Oh, okay. In Kojo somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, but I do have an explanation of why I I um, displayed the petrified rose, and I, I'm going to speak on it at a I hope sometime this week coming up. Why do you feel the need to sue? Why do you need to feel the need to sue the 
coach lady. I mean, she she seems a little touched herself, but oh, yeah, she's touched. Um, coach yeah. lady's definitely a little touched, but but what's why do you want to take it there to sue her? It's what, it's what she said. Okay. I'm going to hold her accountable for what she said, and I'm going to ask her to prove it in court. I don't know what she said, but yeah, Tina said drop the lawsuit and move on. Mm -mm. There's damages. Ain't a, what damages, Chaz? Nobody's watching that YouTube channel. What damages are you really going to prove? Like, let's let's be real. I, I can feel prove, like this is this is I can, too petty. <laughs> I, I can prove some damages. Yes. Loss of income where? I can prove that. I have a few LLCs, and I had a business partner address me about something she said. So, I need her to prove that statement is either false or she misspoke, and I will ask her to give a retraction. Okay. Would her giving a retraction now, you know, cause you to pull the lawsuit? Mm -mm. I have been damaged by this, so okay. I need to be made whole. We've already verified assets. Okay. Nope. Damn, okay. Guys, if he can prove that he lost a business partner, business relationship, he lost business, if he wants to pursue it, yes. Um, then who am I to tell him not to? I just feel like if. So, I mean, listen, ch jump over to another round. I put a link in the chat a couple of times as well. Make sure you guys go and watch the exclusive uh, video um, with the panel. But it's on another round's channel. Great, great uh, exclusive. Um, and, yeah, the conversation is an interesting one. He explains Petify Rose. He talks about the, the suing and da -da 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 and all that kind of stuff. So you need to go and watch it uh, on her channel um, and, and actually go and listen to it because... Ah, uh -huh, he, he, yo, oh, he, yo, yo. I don't know what the coach said. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what was said. So, uh, uh, you have to go and watch it to to see what he said. Cause, uh, well, go on to the the <laughs> the coach's one. I don't know which one it was. So, yeah. When I say obviously watching this to, this situation with him, uh, oh, the coach deleted. Oh, did he finally delete it? Wait, did the coach finally delete it? Did he finally delete it? Because I, I know that he was asking for it to be taken down. Himself or a wife, because I don't I don't want to be a girlfriend either. I want to be a wife. But whatever a person really needs, they're gonna gravitate to that. So I don't know why they got Alonso like this. They got. <laughs> oh wait. Wait 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 wait. They delete all of it. Did the coach delete all of it? Yeah. Wait, all the videos? Oh, damn. Well, <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You got know what I'm saying to you? I did not know that. Listen, oh, man. <laughs> and this is what I'm trying to say to you, like, this is just, it's just, it's just silly though, man. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's unnecessary. <laughs> it might be a little bit too late. You're absolutely right, Sean. It might be, um, you know, uh, it might be a little bit too late. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It might be a little bit too late. Cause that, that was, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it might be a little bit too late. It might be a little bit too late for this one. That's a sad situation. Um, let's move on. Uh, and uh, if you're panelists, please, if you're ready, listen. I would love you guys to come behind now. I need my panelists to come through. I see you guys in the chat. Um, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I see Laurie's here as well. Yes, Laurie. Okay. I see Laurie's here too. Uh, so let me get my panelists coming through because. We gonna get the show in a minute or two started as well. Sean said he's coming rece receipts. Oh Lord of mercy! Oh my God! No! <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, look. Um, nah. Look. I. I think. Um, this situation is quite interesting. But anyway, let me play a little clip of because the rest of the reunion we've got to get through, right? Uh, let's get this far here. I want to I want to skip past part because I want to get to flower. How do you feel? I'm... Sorry, let me get to a part where they discuss 
Okay, I forgot about this. Maya and Laron. Laron's facts are, are misaligned because no, if he goes back because to that day, more messing with I, that had, and you mess with I don't know what you. So I don't like, know what dude you're talking about. Who are we talking about? We talking about Chaz. So he's saying that uh, Chaz, and we found out who the 11th member was. It was the chef. <laughs> Apparently the, the 11th member or whatever. Sorry, not 11th member. No, I apologize. Like, I got to got retract that. I don't want to be sued by Chaz. <laughs> I retract that statement at <laughs> 2.32. Let me retract the statement. I apologize. It wasn't the 11th member of Chaz. I apologize. I'm telling back. I don't want to be sued. Um... Uh, let me just say this, uh, that um, apparently Chaz, not Chaz, sorry, I keep, I keep saying Chaz's name. <laughs> I need his name out of my mouth. <laughs> Whoa, pause. No, did he? Um, but let me just say, obviously, that um, uh, Laurent was saying that Koshia had a situation with the chef and with Chaz as well. So I don't know. That's another situation that's there as well. Um, you know, um, that's what he was accusing her of um and I, I don't know it's it's quite interesting that uh that situation so yeah that's what he was accusing her of he was accusing her of the the, the fact there was a there was a chef involved you were upset that i didn't quit the process but you were dating him you were dating the chef you were on hinge damn we were not dating we were not dating no get now this is a part i don't know like you know i was like yo i don't understand wait so Chaz. Said he wasn't dating Koshia. What were you doing? Yeah. Uh, and on, on and this is why you need to go and watch another round. You need to go and watch another round. There's a portion of it where we actually ask the question about, he said about, um, he, uh, you know, he said, uh, listen, he said uh, uh, that, uh, he said, oh, that they, they he didn't I don't think he fully he didn't fully flesh out the Koshia situation. He said they went out he said they, he can't confirm nor deny basically. You know what I mean? Whether it was more than once. <laughs> he couldn't confirm or deny whether it was more than once he met Koshia. And I'm like, why would you not confirm if you met Koshia more than once? Like you're on a dating show, so if you if you went out more than once, yeah, because at that point, you know what I mean? You, you you're gonna play semantics. But in reality, yeah, you weren't dating. So what were you doing? Because you met up more than once. You know what I mean? Yeah? What was you doing? Right? What was you doing? So you need to go and watch another rounds uh, uh, channel and video. Um, okay? You need to... Um, you need to go and watch it. Okay? So I would I would go and watch another round if I was you guys. Um, and go and enjoy uh, those things. Uh, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> Oh my bad. Yeah, let me let me let me let me leave that alone. You're right. You're right. My bad, Jay. All right, cool. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we need to we need to do a full one. We need to do a full one, Jay. We'll we'll do a panel one. You know what I mean? We'll do a panel one. We'll, we'll break it down. The what was said by Cheers. You know what I'm saying to you? That'll be good this week. I think we can do it Monday night or whatever. That'll be wavy. Um. Let's pass it on uh, to the next part. Who has to go? Okay, hold on. Let me get the receipts part, sorry. Because this is interesting for me. And that form Will's opinion about me. The word manipulation is being thrown around. It was read specifically in the text message that this is a game. I'm disturbed because I didn't come in this as for it to be a game. And so... Now, of course... Uh, of course, obviously, uh, you know, that Will got called out. Alexis got called out. Um, this was another lie. that Because <laughs> Will never told me that he was conspiring with, uh, you know, Alexis. And Alexis definitely denied conspiring with 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 Will, um, you know, when it came to their situation. So, um, you know, she let us know she didn't say anything to Alexis, right? Uh, sorry, to, to she didn't say anything to Will. Um, but unfortunately, who's Will's inside man? Mm? Who's Will's inside man? 
So Will, who is who's Will's inside man? So that's what I'm saying to you. We knew that Will only had one connection. Alexis. Mm. So yeah. And that's all to say about that situation. You know what I mean? Um that was uh, another thing. So then point two. So that's uh, that's weird. Like they don't okay. make no sense. Okay. It happened, it is what it is, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, you see me in public try to dap me up and I look you up and down. I ain't trying to do that. Now apparently the situation got more heated than it actually looked. Can't lie to you. Apparently the situation got more heated. It, it turned into uh, there's some madness that happened. Apparently there's a bit some other fights and stuff. So, um, you know what I mean. So there's a lot more that was going on with the situation. Um, so there, there's a lot more that has had happened behind the scenes. So I'm gonna say this. Um, I know that Laron said he's gonna come on uh, next week as well. I've got Maya as well coming on. Uh, as well, I think Alonso said he wants. Alonso did say he wanted to come on again, so Alonso decided to he gonna come back on um, and explain some things as well. Hopefully, um, and we'll lock that down. But definitely, Leron and Maya we coming on next week, um, and we going we we going to talk about some things. And Leron said he's gonna tell us the whole truth. I don't know, so we'll see what happens. You get me? We'll see what happens in that situation. Um, but yeah, so it, it gonna be interesting. That's for sure. All right, cool. I'm going to get my, my panelists on. Obviously, the last part of it um, is Justin and Mika. Um, they they ended on a good note. And shout out to them as well. You know what? I was wrong. You know what? I thought they weren't going to make it. Never would have made it without you. Okay? All right? I never would have made it without you. You know what I mean? Never would have made it without you. Okay? So, um, you know, they, they, they made it. You know, and I, I didn't think they would. I can't lie to you. I didn't think they would. I didn't think they would, but they made it. So, and I think they're still dating to, 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 to today as well. So, never would have made it. Okay, never would have made it. You know what I mean? The children thing is a major thing. I don't get the children thing. I will be honest. That's the only thing I don't get. The children thing, I don't, that's the only one I don't get. I don't get. The children thing. That how he's able to just kind of say he doesn't want to miss out on something. For her dog. I don't get it. Was this a big step for you making in introducing him to your kids? It is because my children have only been around one other person. I'm not the type that's going to keep bringing different multiple people around my kids. So right. I need to know like if it's going to be... I think the energy was a little bit down too. I think they were a bit frazzled after everything that's happened. Um, um, you know. Uh, but I, 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 I think kids... Compromise is a very big thing. I think kids as a compromise is huge. And I don't know... Um, I don't know. I don't know. That's a very big thing. You know what I mean? Um... And so hopefully they, hopefully they get an understanding. Hopefully they come to a place where they come to some, because I just, I just, I know that he said he wouldn't mind it. He's indifferent. And I'm like, is he really indifferent? Can you be indifferent if you actually wanted it? You know what I'm saying to you? So, um, yeah, I don't know. Crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to take this out. Ooh, baby. All right, listen. We have almost uh, 900 people in the room. Like I said, we're going to get to 1,000 tonight. It's going to be interesting because I'm going to get my panelists on. Um, but if you are in the room and you have not subscribed to the membership, I'm going to tell you something. You need to subscribe to the membership because it's about to go members only. Okay, all right. It's about to go members only, meaning if you are here and you are not a part of the show and you're not a member only, you're going to not be able to comment on the show. So I want to, I want you guys to be able to comment on the show and I want to be able to, I want you guys to be able to be a part of the communications and the, and the jokes and the conversations. I don't want you to miss out. So if you haven't done so, I need you to join the membership. So I'm going to tie it up. I'm going to give you guys a link so you can join the membership. It is a little S button at the very bottom and a little dollar sign. Click on it. You can share it. 
I know some of you also uh, want to, some people are sponsoring people as well. I know that too. I appreciate you. Some people reached out to me and said, how do you sponsor? The same way that you, you join the membership, the same way you sponsor people as well. So um, shout out for those of you who also reached out to me who want to sponsor, which is, listen, you guys are doing God's work. I promise you. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I, honestly, you know, um, you know what I mean? So, uh, you lot are doing God's work. I'm going to say that straight. Y'all are doing God's work. Okay. All right. Y'all are doing God's work. Um, for those who are helping other people. All right. Yes, Tina Bree. They're doing God's work. Yes, Tina. They're doing God's work. When people decide to help people by spending money to let them get the membership too, they're doing God's work. Okay. They're doing God's work. That's what we call it. Okay. They're sponsoring for other people to also be blessed. Okay. Mm. Um, so I'm going to put a link in the chat for you guys to join a membership as well. Let me get that for you guys as well, okay? In the meantime, let me get lawyer Sean up quickly because he he got he he wanna he 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 ready to address some things. Oh, you dressing you dressed ready to go, Sean? Are you ready to go? Yes. Can we get a ticker? Can we get the news ticker? Fresh yes, we can. <laughs> yes, we can. Let me get that for you right now, Captain. Okay. You want to uh, say something? Yes, Sean. Talk to me. Bro, check your, I put it in the group chat, but uh, please check your individual DMs. I've sent okay. you some, some information, I think fresh you, off the press, some of which I we think may you share. You, separately. you might have to send it to me separately, one by one. Hold on, I'll just do it to myself. It's all right. Okay, I see it. Yeah, talk to me. What are you saying? So, I'll send it to yeah. one by one. I, I know that last week, so this is just a follow up to our previous conversation. You know, I'm talking, I'm putting on my corporate voice today. You know, so uh, it was a follow up from our previous conversation around Alonzo. Uh, remember, he did that uh, that infamous live or video from his IG channel. Mm -hmm. So he talked a little bit about a scenario which seemed to be a little unclear. So, you know, we were trying to put the pieces together of who he was referring to, uh, who he was discussing around a particular lawsuit or police report rather, let me correct myself, not a lawsuit, I'm sorry, correct that, uh, police report that he was filing because of the R word. So in these specific, in these specific receipts, uh, this was dropped in the Lipstick Alley. Uh, I cannot reveal my source, but a very trusted viewer of uh, LBB and, uh, and loves our panel, uh, dropped some information, gave me some very specific screenshots and they kind of coincide with uh, the story that he was telling. So allegedly, allegedly, we're gonna say allegedly, but uh, I'll give a little breakdown and then you can show them on the screen if you like. Uh, this particular young lady, the one who helped him out uh, is a, a young lady by the name of, uh, her name begins with an S, just in case you don't show it. Uh, if you show it, her name, her full name will be revealed, but she was the young lady that he called up to help him when his car broke down. So his car broke down. This was a young lady that he had a particular relationship on around the time of the show, somewhere between April and May, let's say. We know the show filmed somewhere between May and August was the show filming, give or take, don't quote me on months. These are rough estimates. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, this young lady, he had a relationship with her. And again, I think this is just an example. And I think this is an example for us gentlemen to learn consent. We really need to understand what consent looks like what crossing boundaries looks like, uh, because the young lady claimed, the young lady claimed that uh, he was a little rough during their inter, you know, during their intimate moments. So she asked him to stop. He did not. Similar like we saw in Alexis, allegedly we were kind of able to glean examples of how she still continued the relationship on, hoping things would be different. But unfortunately, he kind of used her you know, to take him to Walmart after they they were finished, she felt a little discarded. So that's that's the that's the latest and greatest. So seems like Alonzo hasn't learned. Unfortunately, he needs to learn better boundaries. He needs to learn how to effectively communicate with women, what he's looking for in relationships. He needs to discuss intimate moments, have those conversations, what's comfortable, what's not, and make sure that they're on the same page. Back to you, Coach. So there is, again, two sides of the story, it seems like. So Laurent, um, 
obviously um you know alonzo put his ig live up there and discussing the situation and the lady also put her a uh, situation on i think it was a facebook group as well um that she was that she also spoke about um and so she unfortunately in the situation you know it seems there are two different conflicting stories in a scenario in the situation so um this is what we're saying like you're saying the key part of this is the conversation around boundaries you know um so you know we have to be very careful as men um that there isn't that we don't and this is why we're saying it's an important conversation that is important that would have happened on the reunion that actually this could have this this we have to educate men you know what i mean that the, our behaviors can be easily due to the fact there's a power dynamic between men and women you can easily trip a wire you know what i mean so it's, it, that's why i said it's, it would have been great for an educational piece for ready to love to do so right um but now there's two like i said he's explained his side the girl's kind of explained her side um of course there's somewhere in between we don't know what's gonna happen um i know that he said he's, he's doing some um um you know um i don't know what is she can obviously i don't know what he's his perspective obviously that is like it's very different to what her one is so when they if they go to court and do with it then you know they will they will go and deal with it from there going forward so yeah that's that's between the two of them as he said he put his side across and said his piece she's also said her piece as well so when i'm not going to choose a side i'm going to say listen we just need to be careful as men. That's what I'm going to say. A general consensus over this situation is, as men, we need to be careful. And this is why we're harping on this situation with Lamar, Alonzo, it's harping on with uh, uh, Jonathan's situation. We can easily go over. So we've got to be very careful as men, right? So I appreciate that, Sean, bringing that to the, to the, to the foreground. Um, you know, I think it's an important conversation to be, to be having as well going forward. So... Um, but again, everything's allegedly. We don't know. They've got two sides of the story. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, listen, if you're here, listen, guys, we appreciate you guys. Listen, if you're not a member, join the membership, get involved. You can be also, uh, uh, you know, involved in a conversation today. Shout out to some of the people, um, Teresa, shout us a little super sticker. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Pam also sent us said we appreciate our LBB91 panel. Thank you very much. I appreciate that as well. Um, listen, if you want to be a part of the conversation, you want to join into the chat, make sure you are a member as well. It means that you can be part of these conversations. It's time for panel time, baby. Um, I want to get my panelists on. But before I do, listen, if you haven't done so already, we've got a little... Um, I want you guys to just help me out. Uh, for those of you who are interested, who are LBB, you know, people, you're part of the family, you're part of the team, you're part of the, you know, the memberships as well, and you love the kind of stuff that we do. Um, I've got a little uh, survey just to kind of help us understand the kind of numbers because we'll be coming to uh, Houston in August, and I really want to be able to get, I want to really be able to get you guys to uh, do a live show, and I just want to kind of gauge our interest and our numbers. Kind of, you know, I like to make sure we don't leave people out you know what i'm saying to you so if you haven't done so already listen the survey will be there i'm going to put it up houston tour 2024 all right i just want to get those of you who haven't done it please come and join that survey just it's a few seconds a few clicks and we just get an understanding and a, and a bit of perspective of what kind of numbers we'll have and what kind of people want to come and see as well all right so if you haven't done so please if you're about that life you want to see lbb live in houston 2024 please click on the live that i put in uh the link i put in the chat i'm gonna pin it up um and uh we're gonna put it there april gain says she uh uh gifted 10 people well shout out to you april we appreciate you listen if it doesn't come up don't worry um it's appreciated um and those who have got it it's been uh, blessed and we appreciate it as well april shout out to one of our new members too rene as well thank you for joining it's appreciated we appreciate you very much welcome to the family um someone said why come to you when it's hot that's the reason why we're coming <laughs> we're coming to add more heat baby all right listen all right time for the panelist time look first and foremost you know who they are baby let me tell you listen i'll get the mandem on first this gentleman is all the way from the uk okay heavy hitter all right when he decides to go left 
things go left. When he wants to go right, it goes right. You know what I'm saying to you? When he decides he wants to go forward, we go forward. You understand what I'm saying to you, okay? This brother, once he gets a target locked in, he's always hitting the target. You feel me? You can't be outside of his clutches. Welcome to the panel. JR, baby. What you talking about, brother? Got the shades and everything. Oh, bro. Jesus, audio is in my ear. Go on, cuz. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> ah, my like. Oh, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Listen, I appreciate my guy. You're ready. I can tell you're ready. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm definitely good to go right now, bro. I love, I love hope it. everyone's well. I hope you uh, all enjoyed the, the second part. Um, man, I have to say, after watching the first one, I was a little underwhelmed, but from this one, there's more questions than answers for me, man. There's so many different things that came out that um, once we get into the meat and bones of it, uh, I'm hoping to get some stuff cleared up because timelines and, and info, they ain't matching up for me. So, um, yeah, I'm good to go. Like, shoot, shoot, That's shoot. A, <laughs> I said timelines and... and <laughs> They're not matching up. I hear it. Um, we got another uh, heavy hitter from the UK. Okay, all right. She says she's going to stand 10 toes down and when she has an opinion. Okay, all right. And she makes sure, listen, when she's shooting, she's shooting straight. Okay. And if you're in the line of sight, okay, you might get hit. Okay, all right. But she always keeps it educated, always keeps it calm as well. You know what I'm saying to you? And we appreciate her. All right. Okay. All right, and the wig is always wigging, baby. Okay, all right, always wigging, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Shout out to Lorraine, baby. We telling me, Lorraine, you good? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Coach, what's happening with the voice? I'm liking it. Ah! <laughs> well, this happens when you got a roller coaster. <laughs> I lost my voice. I appreciate you. <laughs> I need to keep this. Oh, looking dapper as usual. <laughs> JR, with the, you're, you're just keeping the haters away, JR, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, Definitely. I see. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate hey, you, Lorraine. I'm ruffle some feathers tonight and trigger some people and they join us again on the live. I'm here for it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, our resident, okay, our first lady is here, you know, our legal counsel. You know, when things get techie, we have to have legal counsel because we need to be able to, you know, make sure that certain things when they're said are in alignment, you know what I'm saying to you. And when people try to, you know, drop certain things like Chaz might drop, I may need to consult this individual, you know what I'm saying to you, our, our guardian of the show, okay, all right. And when she decides to strike, Okay, Viper, you know what I'm saying? It's quick, it's swift, you know what I'm saying to you? You don't know what hit you, you know what I'm saying to you? But you know someone hit you, you know what I'm saying to you? That is our resident Seaway, okay? Listen, but because there's only one way, it's Seaway. You know what I'm saying to you? Don't confuse what I'm saying about Jesus Christ, okay? Please, someone's going to call out and say, you're a Christian, please. I'm talking about the show. It's not about the Christianity, okay? Yeah, don't, don't go and call somebody's pastor. All right, listen, welcome to the panel, Seaway. Are you telling me, baby? Hello, hello, hello. I'm still at the hair shop currently, so it's loud. I will be out of here soon. Hello, guys. <laughs> We appreciate you, Seaway. No way, man. We, we know you're dedicated and we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for coming true. We appreciate it, honestly. Um, listen, uh, our, 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 our spiritual guide, okay? Our prayer warrior, okay? Our minister, okay? All right? Our songs of Psalms or Psalms of songs, whichever you want to put it, okay? All right? Our good sis, you know what I'm saying to you? Our chef. You know what I'm saying to you? You know when you need to put certain ingredients together? You see how we've got better people on the panel? Everyone's a little bit, you know, an ingredient. But you need someone to bring it together and just kind of make it mesh very well into a lovely delectable meal. You know what I'm saying to you? All right? Let me not say it to Sean because he's going to get angry at me. Okay? All right? But you're looking delectable, Sean. Don't worry about that. Okay? All right? Um, <laughs> uh, but we, we, we love our... Consent. Have we not learned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that is indeed needed. Uh, but our resident chef, okay, all right, cooking up a storm as always, bringing you great content on her channel too. And listen, I appreciate it all the more, you know, our empath who feels 
when the when the meal is about to be cooked well. You know what I'm saying, to you. So welcome to the panel, Jay Baby. But, 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 but. First of all, I like to say shout out to God because if He didn't give you Kojo the original invite, it wouldn't be no plus ones, baby. It wouldn't be no <laughs> plus ones. All right. <laughs> shout out to my plus ones out there. Love y'all. <laughs> I am so done. So, so, so done. Um, listen, <laughs> look, this ep this episode was interesting. I'm not going to say it was the most amazing episode. It was interesting. So I want to get everyone's initial thoughts on the actual episode before we get into any kind of um, arts and craft around here. So, uh, Sean, just take us away straight. You know, we like our leadership to lead. Um, what was your thoughts on this actual episode? You know, I, I just really feel like there was no closure. You know how people in relationships look for closure at the end? And I was hoping for this second episode to have some closure. And unfortunately, there was no closure given. I feel like the person who ended the relationship, I'm more lost than when I started, than when I ended. So those are my overall impressions. No closure, no accountability, no lessons learned. And you know that I love what did we learn moments. And it seemed nobody learned anything. Definitely hear that at all. JR, initial thoughts on the episode? Yeah, I feel like there was more questions than answers, man. Uh, a lot of loose ends. Um, and even though we got to see some people uh, break down their behaviours and why they did and said certain things, um, I was still a bit, um, a bit thrown off because there was still more information being produced at the same time. And some of the stuff wasn't getting addressed. So I, I felt like Tommy could have addressed a few more issues that were going on. Um, and I feel like uh, there's still beef, there's still tension between a lot of the cast members. And, you know, it's a show that they're supposed to be coming on the show to love, not not hate each other. So I would have liked to seen a lot of those loose ends tied up too. That was my overall thoughts. <laughs> Definitely hear that. Uh, Lorraine, talk to us. Yeah, part two was a bit lackluster for me. I think that they needed, probably they needed Alexis to kind of spice things up. Um, is that her name? Alexis, the crystal? I don't know. Um, yeah, and the fact that they kept on talking about Glenn, that's how you know how dead mm -hmm. the episode was. Because, I mean... Bless his heart. He's a beautiful man, but I just, he's just awkward. He's not like camera friendly. Do you know what I mean? So that was just annoying. And every single one of them is problematic. And I can't wait to get into it. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Internal lies. See way, see way. I don't know if she can answer because I know she was doing her. Hair. Sorry, guys. One second. I'm wrapping no, up. No, you're good. Don't worry. Don't even worry. I'll, I'll come back to you, Seaway. Uh, Jay. Um, after listening to y'all just now talking about how there was no closure, it just real made me realize how real life dating really is. A lot of times there is no closure. And sometimes you just got to be able to move on and find your own peace. And shout out to those that was there that did that. And um, I hope the ones that couldn't manage to do it look back at this and realize where they need to just go ahead and learn how to move on in peace. Definitely hear that. Definitely hear that. All right, let's jump straight in. I mean, because, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, the mandem obviously were straight up, which was Lamar and, and Jonathan's situation was the first kind of... Uh, uh, the initial situation that was addressed on the show I want to get you guys thoughts on that um you know i want to definitely understand where you guys sit with this situation so jr let me let me let you start jr what's your thoughts we had obviously lamar and jonathan they both addressed their situations with the ladies that they had lamar obviously him being a little bit touchy-feely and then jonathan with um his situation where he had a situation with alexis what's your thoughts um on how everything went on the reunion talking about their two situations yeah like i i think um there is a distinction between the two even though both moved mad in their own individual respects there, there's a huge difference i think what jonathan did um 
you know, I have to say he took accountability straight away as soon as he felt like it, he overstepped the mark. He apologized multiple times to her and he saw the error of his ways. Um, and he wasn't one of the guys that was moving really creepy, apart from his obsession with feet, like this foot fetish thing. Uh, I thought that was way OTT. Um, you know, that was bad. But I think the difference with Lamar is Lamar was leading with um, sex and innuendos and everything. And he didn't see no error in his ways. He didn't see no need to change it, or tame it, customize it to whoever he was speaking to at the time. Um, so that just gave me the impression that Lamar was was for the streets, basically. He wasn't interested in finding love. He's, he's straight looking at the lust aspect. Um, Jonathan, on the other hand, I think he could have been actually trying to turn a corner, turn a page and find a relationship of sorts. But again, I just think he's not really someone that can. Uh, I'm not. I don't think he's someone that could have, can adapt to the environment well enough to have found success on the show. Um, like I said, leading with that foot fetish thing, for me, he went way too too far with that talking about it too much, and um, I think he didn't really need to clear up the situation with him and uh, Mika, where she assumed he had a baby mother and all of that. But that was one of the reasons that got him off the show. Like they deliberately found him to be like untrustworthy because he didn't disclose everything. So uh, yeah, two different situations. I give Jonathan a bit more grace in the situation because I, I think he was genuinely there to try and find somebody when it didn't work. He just uh, walked away and held his hands up. Lamar, nah, he's an issue. If he had stayed longer, I think he would have got into more shenanigans, more problems. Appreciate it. Sean, Jonathan, Lamar. Yeah, I unfortunately have secondhand embarrassment, you know, for the, for the fellas. And I, I said it early on this season. Um, I think there's just some lessons to be learned on behavior uh as much as you know i'm glad that jonathan uh, apologized i think the the conversation we really should have had the conversation and i don't feel like with his explanation he truly understood what he did and i think it's layered uh in terms of what he did and you know even with the breakdown that you just shared you know which where, where chloe gave other insight i think sometimes when when um men are interacting with women they need to really listen and i'm just gonna kind of share like a little bit i had a really good conversation with two family members around sa and it was just eye-opening and I might have touched on this before, but it, it it has really changed my my perspective about what that looks like uh, for women. Uh, really leaning into, and I'm I'm not pandering. I just wanna I just wanna make sure I'm prefacing that nobody said it, but I just want to make sure because sometimes when when we as men speak out about what other men do, people want to accuse us of pandering. And I'm not. I'm just telling you, like I literally had to learn. Um, and really you just sit back and you listen and you hear the stories of what women have gone through at different levels, right? All the way to the worst case to things in the middle. And it's in many instances, because we're not listening, because we're projecting, because we are <clears throat> thinking that another woman liked this. So this woman is going to like that. Uh, I think we really, really, uh, have to be sensitive to that. And I'm glad. Jonathan apologized, but I'm still, I need, I need him to fully understand and deal with what he did in that moment and in such a public space, uh, because it, it's not good. Uh, Lamar also, he, when you talk to somebody about their behavior and you have another man in, in this instance, Tommy trying to tell you like, Hey, listen, what would you do wrong? You know, like, what would you, would you do this again? Did you learn anything? And in, in the double down, the double down mentality is even more dangerous. It's more dangerous uh, because when you double down, that means you don't care. You're dismissive. 
you're not listening and you're not open to feedback. So that is equally problematic. And I just want to end back with Jonathan. Just because Jonathan apologized, it doesn't mean he's not going to do it again until he fully grasps the depth of what happened. So that's why I think it's important for us as men to even talk about it, because sometimes guys are not. It's like they're like, hey, I stopped. I, it, it, nothing really happened yet. But you don't realize the 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 gravity and the weight of what you've done. So I think you got to really, really learn that lesson. Like, you know, I get it. Apology is great. Sometimes people apologize because they're caught. Sometimes people apologize because, oh, they feel bad in the moment. But the apology doesn't necessarily lead to a changed behavior. So I think we got to get to the point where we have a changed behavior, where we are listening. We are creating spaces where women are comfortable in talking about their experiences so we as men can lean in and understand, you know, so that's, you know, that's my, 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 uh, my insight about that. No, I appreciate it, Sean. Very, very good breakdown. It's important that as men, we, we address that situation, especially when us to go first. Cause I think it is, it is a very, um, uh, touchy subject, but it's, it's something that needs to be addressed. Um, and like I keep saying as well, as men, we do, we're sometimes ignorant because of the fact we don't get to see ourselves in the position of um we 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 are, you are usually in a dominant dominant position so you don't oftentimes get to see the effects of our behavior in the way that um when women are explaining it sometimes we see it from our perspective and like no that's not that, that deep like someone might say oh Jonathan thing was a mistake and it's not that deep but and it, it, listen I, I do think he was I don't th I don't know if he was trying to I don't think he was trying to necessarily do that to her but I want to say that obviously that like you said, I hope he actually has learned, you know what I mean? Because whilst the apology has, you know, been graced publicly and privately, hopefully he's learned because, you know, the understanding of that behavior is, it, it, it stems from somewhere. And that often stems from our entitlement as men that we, we don't think about the other party. We don't have to, because as men, we are always in the place of dominance. So it's important that hopefully he's able to to really grasp that and understand that from the men's, from, man's, from the woman's perspective and understand that this is a very heavy situation and not just him. Lamar hasn't done it, but the, well, he did actually with the April situation. We just didn't go deep into it. But when he tried to kiss her neck, you know, um, like we saw a couple of seasons ago with Troy doing the same thing. It's like, you are breaking people's boundaries and you're not just breaking people's boundaries. It's getting dangerous because you're, you're forcing them to, to kiss someone. If a girl wants to kiss you and you don't want her to kiss you, you know, this, 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 this you, 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 you would be wilding out. Right. Better yet, we do know what it looks like. Because if you ever had a man try to touch you before, <laughs> yeah, you, you, I've I've seen men wanted to kill. So you, we we have we have to understand that. Listen, it's 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 not a joke, right? If a man pulls you onto his lap without asking you, yeah, you 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 want you might want to do something to that person, right? So it's it's not a small thing. So definitely needs to be addressed. Now, appreciate the way that you explain it, Sean um and 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 brought it up as well so thank you for that as well sean um let me uh, uh quickly just do it quickly uh shout out to april as well for uh the gift and attend memberships we appreciate you i always say it we appreciate people giving in the space okay mm -hmm. Shout out to you. We appreciate April. Thank you very much for gifting uh, the people them. And Pam also gifting 20 memberships as well. We appreciate you. When you gift to people, okay, and you and you do this out of your heart, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? And those who are in the uh, audience now can join and have a part of the conversation and join in the festivities as well. So shout out to you, Pam, as well. Thank you. All right, cool. All right, let me go to the ladies now. Um, Lorraine, talk to me. Because uh, Jonathan and a Lamar situation, it got kind of swept aside a little bit. From a, from your perspective, especially as a woman, I think you'll be very helpful to kind of get a, give, out, give us a perspective of what you were kind of seeing and sensing from those moments on the reunion. What's your thoughts on, on that? Yeah, I mean, I have... Okay, I have... An, I have smoke for production first and foremost. So I think they really wanted to push the narrative of let's just play it down. This was all fun and games. Let's just all make this really, really jokey. And I think for reason, financial reasons, probably they don't want any lawsuits on their doorstep. So they just really trying to minimize it. So I really do think it 
plays into some of the responses that we were getting from from the men um i would have really really appreciated if, if they at least maybe tommy would have said it or maybe at the beginning or at the end if you know to say if anybody has um experience a say um this is going to be a triggering um session or you know you can get help from a b c d to do that due diligence but i can understand that by doing that they're kind of uh, making it as, as serious as it is so that's the first thing my other thing is that I actually if I was to compare the two I would say that Lamar is that his name is less dangerous in my opinion than Jonathan because you can see Lamar come in he's very direct he says it how it is and for me I can only speak for myself it's easier to kind of stay stay clear from a person like that. Whereas Jonathan is really well-spoken, really sweet, really gentle, comes across as that. So for when Tommy to say, how do you feel when you um, behaved out of character? I thought that was a leading question because that's insinuating that it is out of character and that's insinuating that you know him. I would have liked the question to be phrased differently. I was also waiting for his response, for him to kind of go the whole, you know, I was drunk, heat of the moment. The fact that he decided to be honest and actually say, I wanted to spice things up, I thought, okay, so this is a problem, right? So your version of spicing things up is uh, pushing somebody's boundaries and you not understanding that doing something that um, is not only going to make somebody feel uncomfortable, but is very inappropriate. You know, in his apology, he was saying that, you know, I'm, I embarrassed her, I made her feel uncomfortable. That was also telling you're embarrassing for you're you're apologizing for embarrassing her. That, that is not the situation here. Your your apology should be your misconduct and your inappropriate behavior. So for me, somebody like that is much more concerning in terms of what happens behind closed doors. I know it was all tongue in cheek, you know, all everything that he was saying in terms of toes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we're grown. But after his explanation and apology, I just started looking at him a little different. And I think there's a lot of men in society who present as Jonathan, who are well presenting and um, and behave like this. And they're giving kind of like a, a slap on the wrist because on the overall, they are, you know, they're nice men, the A, B, C, D. So... I'm not condoning Lamar's behavior, absolutely unacceptable. But what I'm saying is, as a woman, um, I would be able to spot Lamar from a mile away. Um, and I think as most women do, but someone like Lamar that you would assume is, is, is a genuine nice guy from what I've seen on the show, um, it was very, very, very concerning. And I think that... Um, Vedita Life could have actually taken that opportunity, but I understand they're a business at the end of the day and they don't want to lose it on their hands. So, yeah. Fair points. I appreciate it, Lorraine. Thank you. Um, Jay, talk to me. All right. Please forget my background because my nephew was playing with his toy. Oh, you fine? Okay. Um, so you had mentioned something earlier in this live, Kojo, about how certain people act into their insens insensitivity of being SD'd and um, M or R at an early age or at any age or whatever. So me and Sean has talked. My insensitivity leads me to go down the road of awareness and how to have discernment and protect yourself from those particular situations. Um, so in the case of Lamar and Jonathan, Lamar is easier to spot because Lamar is, a, he's knocking on boundaries door all the time. He's always just testing the boundaries and seeing how far he can go. But people like Jonathan, Alonzo, um, even even Lamar, I mean not Lamar, um, Laron to agree, and not saying he's as as a, but he 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 violates you in other ways. You don't see them. 
you don't see them right away. You almost don't see them until it's too late um, because you're not really looking for the behavior that 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 says st they're not going to stop. Just like Alexis was sitting there saying on beating up, saying she was beating on his chest. Stop, stop, stop. You know, and a lot of times I tell people I, I they like to say I'm victim shaming or whatever and stuff, but I, it's not I'm victim shaming. I'm trying to teach you how to be aware. Sometimes you cannot play with people a certain way. And it was OK for Koshia to have her boundaries set in place to say you're not going to play with me like this. You have to do that with some people. And when you start to learn how to spot these people, it gets very easier for you to sit there and say, you know what? You're not the one to be played with. There's some people I can flirt with and some people I just cannot do it because if I do it, they're going to think that's an invite. They're, they're going to they're gonna be like Lamar knocking on that door. And as soon as I give them that, yes, it's OK. Now you can test me. Now you can do whatever. Now you can cross my boundaries no matter what I say, because you, I gave you the one yes. So sometimes when I do talk, it is from that angle of, hey, let's be aware of the surroundings that we put ourselves in. You know, um, I don't want to sound like I'm blaming Alexis right now or whatever, but when it comes to her comment on Koshia trying to give her the warning, hey, these men are crossing people's boundaries. This one was a verbal crossing. Unfortunately, she didn't want to listen to that. And what happens was she got a physical crossing and it shouldn't have got that far. And I know apologies doesn't really help, you know, um, when you've been, you feel like you've been violated and, and no, he didn't go all the way there because there's an audience there. But imagine if there wasn't an audience, you know, you got to just think it's like, it's, we want men and I can't talk to men because I'm not a man, but I want men to be aware of a woman being uncomfortable, feeling that energy and want her to want you. Don't just take her because you can, but you take her because she wants you to take her. She's wanting that from you. And and if she's not giving you that green light and everything in your her body is telling you no, and she's rejecting you. Just stop. Just have that willpower in you to stop. Just don't go there because that is telling you she's not the real woman for you. There's women that will tell you yes and give you that free green light. Just go there with them. Don't just because I want this woman. I got to have this woman. You're going to take it. It's not right. And, and we wouldn't have this whole Me Too movement and all this stuff like that if people would just know how to set boundaries on themselves. I don't I don't feel like women have to always keep setting the boundaries. Men need to set boundaries on themselves as well. I'm going to stop there because my baby getting loud now. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a word. I appreciate it, Jay. Go for it, Siwe. I don't want to say more than what's already been said, but I think this environment, <clears throat> the environment that they were in was conducive or it kind of laid the foundation for all the things in the boundary crossing that happened. It's production putting someone like Lamar on every season. There's been almost, for at least the last two to three seasons, there's been a man like Lamar that if he was in a workplace would be fired for the words, for the stuff that he's constantly saying, constantly saying inappropriate or suggestive things. Production has been doing that every season. And then they, then they want the women to speak up and say something about it, which to me is my bigger problem. Like you're putting it on the women to have to, basically speak up about the toxic environment that they're in so for me lamar and he even said this he's playing a role on the reunion he said there it's been a him for the last three seasons at least so for me that's all on production lamar cannot be changed i said this on another round this is the type of foolery he's an old nasty man he's an old nasty man old nasty men cannot be changed this is what he's gonna do so what's best is that, you know, production and other people need to protect women, protect the environment, keep the, 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 you know, keep the environment sacred. And not only did they not do that, they have Lamar on there on purpose. This man is trans, this man is transparent. He, he's bold. He's blunt. And he's, he, he you, like y'all said, you can see him coming. So nothing about the stuff that he was doing was to me hidden or covert. So 
I just don't know how much smoke I'm going to give an old nasty man for being an old nasty man. I don't know what else to say about him. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, old nasty man with a hairpiece. Um, but moving on to Jonathan, you know, I, I'm not good. Everything y'all said about Jonathan, I think is true. Um, and I also think he's definitely one of those people that you have to um, be mindful of because honestly, he could have caught a lot of people slipping with, with what happened. And as a woman that's also experienced um, a sexual assault, you don't want to, you feel very guilty about speaking up and saying something against um, a, a man, especially a man that appears like a good guy. But what I have to push back on, especially Alexis interview, blaming it, blaming it, ba blaming his behavior on being a Q and basically making so many excuses for him. I think we also have to not do that because what we're doing is was we make excuses for men, try to justify their behavior then they believe that everything they're doing is okay and then they go to do it to other women and i know that's our default like that we try to we try to make excuses for them because in our head we're making excuses for us like that's kind of the cyclical thing like that's what we're really doing but it has to be stopped it has to be stopped not only does does what he actually did need to be said and not minimized you can't make excuses oh he's a good guy oh he has a family Oh, he has kids. We got to stop doing that. And this is coming from a person that's brain actually thought to do the same thing. You cannot do that. And I understand why she's doing it. But also, again, I think Jay said this. When you, what Alexis is doing, and this is why I say all the time, the pick me is the down is, is the downtrodden individual of the female. Uh, uh, of being a woman, because what you what you're doing is so dangerous. If she would have stood with Koshi and the other people who would have said, who said some of the men are are crossing boundaries, instead of supporting another woman, she thought she was better than the other woman, and then it got worse, and then it got worse, and then it got worse. So I think when you hear another woman say something, you don't have to just believe them outright, but don't. But do your own due diligence before you put them down, before you dismiss them, because you may look up and it may be you. And women, we have to stick together. We stick together because we need to, not because we want to. And I think that's a big part of it. And I hope that lesson is also um, learned here. So I don't know, Jonathan, I don't know if this was a one off or not. I don't know. And I hope that he's learned and he you know, never does something like that. Again, I can't speak to what he does or what he's done before, but I do know that that particular situation, especially his honesty, I do appreciate his honesty about how he was trying to uh, turn the club up instead of putting it on being drunk. I'll give him two points for that. But I, I really, I really hope that he learns because that's a mess. And in production, my last thing in production puts another Lamar Habibi for Breeze on this show, I'm going to assume that they are encouraging this type of vulgar, inappropriate behavior because Lamar is not doing anything for the show. Nobody wants to see it. It's actually triggering and it's annoying. So I really hope they don't put another Lamar character on the show. So, yeah. Very, very true. Very, very true, Seaway, you know, and I think, you know, we've made this point over a few seasons. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't get invited to Owen's thing, because I keep talking about it. Like, it's like, you can't keep getting away with this, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm all, listen, we talk about Married at First Sight and them choosing really political, poor, poor choices and stuff like that, right? But I think it gets to a point where, you know, I think it's, it's, I think it's dangerous when we're, and I call it the devil's playground, where people are intentionally choosing people that are dangerous. You know what I mean? I don't I don't like that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying to you? Um, um and so yeah, you know, they, like like Lamar like you were saying to you about Lamar saying there's people like him every season. It's an it's a it's a problem. And it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a regular thing, you know, but we've had it for the last four or five seasons. It doesn't make sense why these people keep getting casted and they're not pretending to hide who they actually are, you know. 
Um, and so, yeah, it, it's 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 sad to go through those kind of situations. So I appreciate you um, sharing your thoughts, ladies, as well, um, from different angles. It's been very helpful um, as well. Any other uh, additions to that before we, we shift it? Um, I don't know if the ladies want to add anything else or anything, or Sean, you want to add anything else? I mean, I, I would just say, you know, I'm so glad that you started with the, um, you know, the breakdown and talking about Alexis, because I think too often, like if somebody had a bad interaction, like you had a not so good interaction with Alexis, especially towards the end of your interview, but you were able to exercise some empathy still for her and look at the situation. And I just would encourage us all to do that. You know, we don't have to like somebody to see that a wrong was done to them, right? Um, and I'm not saying anybody on the panel is saying that. I, I just want us to be clear because sometimes we look in the comments, you know, we'll see like little things. Oh, well, Alexis was denying Koshia. So, you know, she deserves what she got. Yeah, no, you got to cut that out. That's the wrong way to think. Nobody deserves to be harmed. Nobody deserves to be hurt. Nobody deserves to be treated in a harmful way. Uh, life does have have a way of, you know, kind of making us look at ourselves, but it's not always. And that's not up for us to say, oh, well, they got what they deserve. I just don't like that. I push back on that mentality because I think it's harmful, you know, because people people get hurt. People get harmed. Uh, I think this topic that we're talking about is very layered. I I just want us to not sometimes we get information, especially if it challenges our worldview. We want to deny. So I just encourage people to just listen with an open ear, you know, when you hear something that's new to you versus deny, uh, because when you go from the deny place, you're never really going to get to a place of enlightenment and then to be able to hear so that you can learn. And, and, and that's really my main issue with somebody like a Lamar, because instead of saying, hey, I've got several people telling me, calling me to task on my behavior, but I'm denying versus trying to listen and hear what I could learn and grow from. Yeah, that's a it's it's a problematic way of doing things because that means you're gonna keep doing it, you're never gonna change, you're not gonna be receptive, and then you're gonna turn around and expect people to still love you and accept you for who you are. Well, you you also need to be open to 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 hear other people's views and to be able to change. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing wrong with changing. There's, we don't have to dig our heels, you know. Oh, I said this yesterday, so it means I have to stick to it today. No, you don't. You can actually change your mind, you can actually hear some new information and have a different perspective. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I think people just need to stop being so locked in, stop being so I'm gonna pick this side and I'm gonna stand on this side because it doesn't get you anywhere, but sometimes stuck in mud. So that's my little two cents. Definitely, definitely great points as well there. I appreciate that. Um, let's shift the conversation um as well and if you're an audience well thank you very much for joining the show today we're 900 strong at the moment let's get to a thousand i think we can do it so share this with somebody else who loves ready to love who loves talking about relationships who love having good conversations um as well all right so uh we're going we're going we're going to uh, you know have a good show and a good show tonight all right cool let's shift the conversation then uh, because the next thing that I, I say shift it, it's not going to be much of a shift. Uh, Chaz and Vanessa, um, <laughs> a situation because, uh, um, you know, he uh, called her a narcissist and then explained the petrified rose situation. Um, you know, he was uh, trying to be poetic to let him know that the love had died. Um, and so I want to know your particular perspective, one of your thoughts. I want to know what you guys thought about this situation between the two of them because, baby, <laughs> it was interesting to me. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> let me let uh, the ladies go first. Lorraine, talk to me. Um, Chaz, Vanessa, situation, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, I'm going to try and be as politically, politically correct as I can be. Um, Chaz it appears to Chaz appears to not want to 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 be wrong and to always be be right in situations i feel like um he didn't like the fact that Vanessa challenged him and i don't know how they spoke and how they interacted behind closed doors but it just appears to me that the way that she did challenge him wasn't in a very 
kind of combative way. She was just addressing, this is the issue, this is how I feel. And I kind of feel like when he doesn't get his way, um, he kind of like throws his toys at the pram and, you know, behaves how he how he behaves. So I think in his mind, he genuinely believes that there's nothing wrong with his behaviour. Um, he genuinely believes that he was being poetic and, you know, he thought he thought he ate with that. Um, but I, I just think that as 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 a grown man, a, a man of his age, I just think that there should there was there could have been a better way for him to communicate um, that you know he didn't want to be with Vanessa because I don't think that's the issue because I think he needs to understand the issue isn't that you shouldn't be with Vanessa or you shouldn't express that you don't like her anymore you don't want to be with her anymore or there's certain things about her that you don't appreciate it's just just going a bit extra just adding a bit of you know pizzazz to it that was absolutely unnecessary so it does come across as being quite nasty now I'm not I don't have any pets but I feel like this might be controversial, but for you to compare your dynamic with your pet with somebody's children as a mom, I find it offensive. I just think that if somebody doesn't wanna be with you because you have a pet and they don't like your pet, you can say that and you can um, state why you love your pet and um, the bonds that you have. You can do that without now trying to compare the two because I just think that it's just offensive. For me, it's just, it just, again, emphasizes just how petty of a man that he is. And I, I just couldn't deal with that because he just tries to one up you every, every second. Um, and I think because he's so well-spoken, he thinks that he can be rude um, and it doesn't come, it's still rude, right? You can be articulate and still be rude. You can eat somebody up without shouting at them. And I know a lot of people were saying that Vanessa, oh, she's probably acting and all this stuff with the voice recordings. I, I think I caught it on one of your previous lives. Even if she was acting, the um, restraint <laughs> to not, uh, respond when somebody is being nasty, is being rude to you. I commend her, acting or not. Listen, give that woman an Oscar if she's acting, because you need to have so much self control for you to not react. I've caught a few of her lives where she's kind of explained her history, and I think we need to be. Not that I'm caping for Vanessa, but I think I understand her story a little bit. Um, in that just because you um, know your red flags or your weaknesses and you're on a healing journey, it doesn't mean that you're not going to fall back into old patterns. And I think she did that with Chaz because he's so well presenting and all that kind of stuff. But there's obviously that toxic side of him that drew her in. And I, I hope that she's she's going to be working on that because even though she is put together, I think she does like that level of toxicity um which which he has um so anyway yeah i just want to say that healing is a journey and i think we just need to give her a bit of grace that she's <laughs> she's you know taken a few steps backwards but yeah Chaz, i'm trying to be politically correct so i can't really say what i actually want to say um he's he's a character that's that's what i'm going to say definitely hear that definitely hear that <laughs> Uh, Jay, because I don't want to be sued. I don't want to be sued. <laughs> like, I just want to say, I don't want to be sued. Like, li listen, like, I have a daughter, I have a mortgage. Like, I just, I don't want to be sued. Okay. And Chaz be suing every Tom Dick and Harry. And I don't want to play into that. But if that, that wasn't the question, I would have said what I wanted to say. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can sue me. I'm gonna be on the run like Tasha K. Find me in Africa, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Listen, listen. It was a petty move. It was a petty moment. Shout out to Vanessa if she was acting or not acting. 
Child, she stuck the character if she was acting, because I would have acted a plum fool. I'm going to tell y'all now. Y'all know it would have kicked in my petty, and I'd be like, oh, we about to go here. I'm so sorry. I cannot take this serious moment. I just really cannot. I, he said it was poetic. I'm still trying to, I'm trying to find the poetry up in it. I missed it. I, I mean, if he just left a flower and didn't say nothing, I probably would have seen the poetry because I'd have made up my own lines. But I, I don't see the poetry in it. Um, I also don't. I'm also one of those people don't see the harshness. I told y'all on my platform that, you know, you give me a, a petrified rose, you give me a, a dead rose. I got one in the bathroom right now, ready to go into potpourri. Like, thank you very much. The rest of these flowers about to be mixed up in it too. I got some essence and some oils and all this stuff and we about to get it popping. It'd have been in bath petals in my bathtub or whatever. I would have rejuvenated these flowers. So I wouldn't have never seen it in the petty way, but it would have opened the petty floodgates and y'all would have had a daggone show right then and there. I ain't gonna hold y'all. So um, shout out to those that just stay uh, neutral and in and, um, and, uh, in a very safe environment, I guess, uh, and your healing journey. Kudos to you because uh, <laughs> the hill side of me <laughs> wouldn't have seen the light of day that day. <laughs> Resident flowers would have been dead too. I don't know how I'm supposed to take this serious. I'm sorry, y'all. I really can't take that scene serious. So y'all just skip me. <laughs> Am I next? Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. You know, I feel like I've, I've, we covered this topic at nauseum on another round, but the rose situation, I said then, I'm saying now, I think that was petty. I think it was meant to be petty. I think something about Vanessa. I don't know. Maybe Vanessa is a mirror of Chaz and Chaz sees some some things he doesn't like when he looks at Vanessa. But Vanessa really, for, for all the reasons that we were told we will find out later, had got under Chaz's skin to the point where I felt like he went out of his way to be petty and try to embarrass her. He said it was art. He said, you know, he didn't mean nothing by it. Um, I, I, I just don't believe that. Um, I think that the intent was to be mean. The intent was, if not mean, the intent was at least to be petty. Um, and he did achieve on being petty. And I think it also is very bothersome that she doesn't really give a response. Because Vanessa is also very covert with whatever she's doing, whatever they're beefing about, whatever the problem is, Vanessa is covert. And... Um, we found out that Chaz is an Aquarius, and Aquarius is usually thrive with people like Sages or or people like an Aries, like another like boisterous type of sign, loud sign, a sign that's going to be a very reactive sign. And I think something about because an Aquarius or a person like Chaz is able to kind of poke you on the low and then get you to explode. I think the problem is is that. Vanessa refuses to explode. She keeps it cute. She doesn't break a sweat. And I think it's very, very bothersome. And even the Rose thing, she was like, man, that's whack. She she laughed it off and walked away. Um, that really is annoying to him. So I, I think that's what I think about the whole Rose situation. But what I do know is that I don't know what the hell went down between Chaz and Vanessa. I know something went down and I don't really know what it was. And I look forward to actually hearing about it. But I think the way Chaz has carried himself on the show has come off to be very petty, very immature and very unserious. So y'all, I'm a sad, so I'm talking about myself too. So that's all I can really say. I don't, and I don't know what Vanessa did to trigger or deserve this behavior. All I know is, is that production did not show it. So until I see something that deserved that type of display of pettiness, then I have no choice, again, but to believe that that was dead wrong. That's all I can really say. So, I mean, if there's receipts or there's things that's going to come out, then they need to come out. But until then, I don't, I think even if you don't like someone, or 
you know, if you don't like someone or, you know, you don't care for someone, there's better ways to, to go about things. And I just don't think he went about it the right way. Definitely hear that. Definitely. Um, JR, oh, I mean, JR, Sean, talk to me. What's your thoughts about this? Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm in consensus with uh, you know Chaz's behavior. I think he he has to learn better ways to um, handle conflict, and I think this this is something you know, like when I look at how people you know carry on in these shows, to me it's all you know you just tie it back to you know relationships, and like if somebody does something to you in your in in your relationship, which inevitably is going to happen, how do you deal with that? Does the inner petty kick in and you look for get back or do you express yourself? Do you set boundaries? Do you say what you don't like? You know, if you've uncovered the person has lied to you or something happened where they misrepresented something like how do you handle that? And I think, um, unfortunately, sometimes we invest more energy in proving a point. And that's something that I've gotten from Chaz and just watching him and, you know, the conversation we had on Jay's channel uh, yesterday as well. I think he wants to prove a point. He wants to be right. He wants to teach you a lesson. And I think, unfortunately, when you do something that is annoying, hurtful, harmful, however we want to use, whatever word we want to describe to it, if it's not nice, you know, uh, because that's a, something else that we kind of went back and forth with him with that whole Rose thing. Um, it's a not nice thing, right? At the end of the day, however you want to describe it, what what are you what what is your end game, and what are you looking to teach that person, or what are you trying to tell? And I think if you focus more on that and less about um, the other things, you're going to get a better reaction. So if you want to prove a point to her, or if you wanted to show her about her behavior, I would just I would venture to say giving her a petrified rose, no matter where that rose came from. Again, go watch another round. You, you'll hear all the details. We got into Rosegate. We got into it. So um, he will disclose where the rose came from. You know, go over there and watch that and, and, and hear a little bit of his sentiments. But I just don't like the behavior. You know, I think you need to, if you want positive, positive in, positive out. Right. You know, and I think people sometimes they don't think about that. They think about you hurt me. You did something I don't like. So the ends justifies the means. I'm more of a person where if you go positive in and you want positive out, then you're going to you have more room for positive outcomes. Now, does that mean we're all perfect? We do enough things to each other in relationships inadvertently. So I think we should avoid you know, trying to do the things that are going to, you know, on, on, you know, like pre, you know, pre-calculate something that is going to be harmful or hurt somebody's feeling or prove a point. So I think that Lorraine, I'm just going to disagree with you a little bit here about the dog thing. I'm a, uh, my dog, there would be, the, it would be a relationship deal breaker. If a woman told me she has no tolerance for my dog. Now, if you know anything about dog lovers, we don't expect you to do anything. The, the, the most dog lovers, if you if you encounter us with a dog, we don't need you to do anything for our dogs. So for people to think like, oh, you come into my life and I have a dog, I'm expecting you to walk the dog. No, I don't need you to do any of that. Trust me, I got it. You know, trust me, I'm taking my dog to the vet. Trust me, I'm taking my dog to the groomer. I don't need you to do anything extra, but just be kind. Right. And I'm going to respect your boundaries. If somebody's like, oh, I'm allergic. My dog's hypoallergenic, by the way, whatever. Or they say I have a fear of dogs. Then we can ease you into that process. But, you know, I think, unfortunately, unless you've had a, a dog, you're not going to um, you're not going to understand that. And I think you need to understand and people need to go into empathy with with that situation. And, and I'm glad he brought up that comparison because for dogs. And, and pets in general, people feel like they are their family members. Okay. That these, the, if you've never had one, then just don't speak on it to that extent and dismiss it. Be and I'm not saying you did, Lorraine. I'm just saying in general, because some people are so quick. Listen, I don't care about a dog. A dog's going to bark, blah, blah, blah. D unless you've had a dog, I just need you to kind of just sit it out, maybe listen a little bit more, find out about somebody's attachment to their animals, why they have it. Some dogs are people's emotional support animals. 
So I just think we need to have a little bit more room and a little bit more grace for people's different dynamics. Now, if there is an issue that you have with a dog, let's talk about it. But don't dismiss the dog, you know, and it's something personal to me because I have one, you know. So I think just like we need to lean in and be empathetic, don't just say, oh, I don't have it. I don't care about it. It's not my thing. You know, forget you. Hey, then we can be forgotten. And then we don't need to carry on a conversation. We don't need to be in a relationship. But I don't like that sentiment of, oh, you know, and she also explained it. I listened to her on her channel and she was very rude and dismissive about it. Oh, people like their dogs more than they like people. I see people on planes and, you know, they, they, they're more excited to see a dog than they are to see a child. Like, really? Like, I just don't like that mentality. You know, so it did bother me a bit. I'm not saying she deserved any vim, vim she got from Chaz. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's something we need to examine because if you can be just that dismissive of something that's important to someone, hey, you probably have to take a second look at how you examine relationships and how you exercise empathy uh, with your, your spouse and your partners. Can I, can I say something to that real quick? Because I know I made a comment last night about the dog and the children and all this. And yes, those of us that are fortunate enough to be able to have a living human child, as well as fur babies, we don't grasp the understanding of some that will never be able to have children and they fur babies is all they got. I had a godmother who, who unfortunately could not have children. Her fur babies was all she had. Those were her babies. Okay. She treated them just like as much as she could, like, she would have birthed them herself. That is something that is serious to some people. And, you know, some people might not get it because you just, you know, you don't tolerate animals. I got aunts that don't tolerate them because they didn't like people having them all in the kitchen and all that. I get that. Some people have allergies. I get that. But when you kind of get to a space that you despise one of God's creatures that much, but you want to compare it to a human who has the trait and the, and the personality to even become like you in the first place, that's where I draw the line. And I'm not comparing an animal to a child or anything like that because there's really no comparison. However, to the people that really have nothing else or in my case, I can't have any more. That's my baby. You know what I'm saying? And I feel the same way if I was to lose my daughter I'm, it's it hurts a little bit more because I was thinking about this and I was sitting on this. Condolences to the people who lost their children before they they pass. Condolences to those people and prayers go out to those people. But I pray that you never feel that experience and you have to go through that when you have a fur baby. I'm just so sorry. They don't get the lifespan we get. You know what I'm saying? And the sad part is they don't get to talk to us and tell us about anything that's going on in their life the way that humans get to do it with each other. They can't tell us when they're hurting, they're in pain. There's a lot of things that go into that blessing that God gave us to be dominions and overseers of animals that I don't know people just overlook, but that was the gift that God originally gave man. You know what I'm saying? That was our gift to be able to watch over the other living beings in this earth. So for us to just throw away that gift, that's kind of a slap in God's face in a way too. And that's just how I believe. You don't have to agree with me. You know what I'm saying? You can believe how you want. But to me, I just frown my face on people that just do unthinkable things to animals for no reason out here. You know, you go hunting lions in the daytime or, you know, you just tie up a dog and just drag them along because you can. That's just so mean or whatever. So just to have that much venom that she kind of did for the dog, I would like to really know why. Like, or you do have a actual beef with it. Like you was bit as a young age. I, I can get that. I can, I can respect that. I can stand by that. There's some people that just have fear from young age. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not saying you have to love a dog, but just any animal. I know, baby. <laughs> Just any animal. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> 
you know, it's, it's crazy. So maybe there's an animal out there that Vanessa likes, maybe a fish or something. I could rock with her. If she likes fish, we can do it. I don't know, you know, but if it's just all animals, I kind of, I'm going to look at you sideways, like putting the sugar on the grits. I'm sorry. We're going to have to go back to that. I just want to add something really quickly. Sorry. I personally am terrified of dogs. I am terrified of any animal, cats, fish, anything. I'm terrified. But I have been with somebody who had um, a cat as a pet, even though I was terrified, right? And I, try, I tried the whole gridded exposure, and he absolutely loves his pet. When I say somebody, I mean the father of my child. And he absolutely loves his pet. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so it's not that I don't like animals or I, or anything like that. For me, it, it is a fear. But aside from that, I would never disrespect anyone's pet or even if I am afraid, I would just highlight, oh, I'm God, I'm just, I'm scared of pets. I'm scared of dogs. I'm scared of cats. Just so they are aware because my reaction can be very dramatic because of my irrational fear. Um, I do, however, feel like for me, like the comparison I don't get it and maybe that's coming from a place of ignorance and somebody who not only doesn't have a pet but was also scared of all animals so it might be coming from a place of ignorance but but I do feel like for me that there is no comparison between a human and, and an animal that's not saying that animals aren't precious and should not be looked after and all that kind of stuff I'm not saying that that's just my opinion maybe I just need to be a bit more educated on it but I just wanted to preface the fact that for my point, it's from a place of fear, but I would never disrespect anybody who had a pet. And I I have been with somebody who who had a pet, even though I'm absolutely terrified. Um, it's just, that's just where I think I draw the line, but it might be from ignorance. No, I can stand by that though, Lorraine, you know what I'm saying? Because um, even with my nephew right now, I'm kind of like kind of grooming him to be accustomed to seeing pets and being around them. A lot of babies, you'll notice that they just have a natural fear because either they weren't raised by them or their parents fear them. So a lot of that I can respect, but it was just kind of like the way she, her tone. You know, when we get to talking about tone and intentions that, that and all that, it was the tone behind the way she was saying a lot of stuff on her life. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I spent a lot of time talking about this, but I just want to, just like we had an expansive conversation and I know essay is not the same as being a pet owner, but I'm asking us to lean into empathy. Right. And, and just forget about that. Chaz has done things you don't like, but the topic, right. Oh, Chaz should have left her. If he found out the, who says day one, she said she didn't like dogs. Like it's a lot of assumptions. So no, maybe he found out in the process. We don't know that information. Let's deal with the facts of someone having more empathy about somebody that is a pet owner versus just wanting to dismiss. And, and again, you want to talk about Laurent being dismissed. I mean, Lamar being dismissive. You're just going to dismiss it, right? So we're going to dismiss it because she he should have, as soon as he found out, he should have left. No, how about we need to adjust our, our, our position? Maybe we need to be more open. You know, I love what you said, Lorraine, right? You know, you, you, you're you addressing some legitimate issues you have and let's talk about it. Go for jail. Yeah, like I think um, both things can be true at the same time. I think uh, with regards to Chaz and his pet, we don't know the affinity that he has for the pet, but I know people personally um, that, like Jay said, they don't necessarily have children of their own. So the pet now becomes part of the family or there's a closer affinity there. And the pet can't talk back. So it's about learning the pet and, you know, uh, kind of uh, building a relationship with the pet that's kind of symbiotic, if that makes sense. Um, so when somebody expresses a dislike, there may be that fear that, the pet may be mistreated in their cat in in their company in their presence while you're not there right so there may be a protective element to it but i can also see vanessa's uh point as well where you know like if she doesn't like pets then um that's something that may not change overnight well that leads me to well listen if you know that you don't like pets 
and Chaz has a strong affinity with his pet. As soon as that disconnect was established, then that was time to part ways. Like, there's no need to go to the end. We would have avoided seeing the petrified rose, would have avoided seeing all of that. Because he obviously feels for his pet like, you know, uh, someone close to him, like a family member type thing. Um, so that should have been it. Like, he should have just said, you know what, okay, I understand we have this connection, whatever, whatever. But you know what? My pet means, you know, we've had years together. I'm not going to get rid of my pet. So you need to go and date the other guys. I'm going to go move my way and mess around with the other connections I've got. Would have avoided a whole load of drama, a whole load of libel, <laughs> a whole load of everything, a whole load of shenanigans. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure why they stuck it out, especially like Vanessa had connections that we didn't even know about like one in particular from the brunch apparently so that would have been time to investigate that and, and you know you didn't have to go to the whole bridge i think jr's points the best you. oh i was gonna say i think jr's points the best point right it's very simple if you encounter someone that doesn't want pets i think it's probably the arrogance or the dismissiveness about knowing that you care about your pet and you just being like yeah whatever you know, I think that sounds like that's the problem more than anything. Like, can we make uh, it, there's there's no way to debate how Jay, Sean, I feel about our dogs. Right. But I also can't make I don't know. I don't know if you have a dog, JR or a cat, but you also can't make anybody share that feeling. Right. Um, but I think I would be very taken aback if someone met me and knew I had a dog and how much I care about my dog and they'd be dismissive towards my dog because now I'm taking it as you're being dismissive towards me because you know how I feel about my dog, whether you like dogs or not, it, it's about how I feel. Right. And so I, that definitely should have been like, eh, we should have cut ties, cut ties early. If you guys are not already meeting in the meeting um, over something very simple. So I just mm. want to say, okay, here. Okay. I was going to say that, too. I just want to say the same thing. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Ooh. guys. I, I was a little bit chilly, but now you're warming me up. I like, you see, way <laughs> on fire. <laughs> I was so, I look, look, Chaz told me I was I was so nasty and so rude. So, <laughs> taking feedback. So nasty and so rude. So nasty and so rude. <laughs> no, I, I love the love the look, see, way. Um, Thank you. Yeah, no, listen, it's all right. No worries, babe. Truth is free. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think this is such an interesting topic because I think I actually got what he meant. Like, I, I understood what he meant when he was saying about it's like not one in, it's like not one in someone's kids. I, at first, I didn't understand Dogs Yard. You know, we had the conversation a couple of months back um, last year when we were talking about uh, how people feel about their dogs, right? Um, and... Um, you know, I got to understand that, you know, dogs for people is really is like their kids. You know what I'm saying to you? Okay. Um, and when you look at it that way and you understand that, that people's pets are like their kids, it's not to say that a pet is equal to a kid, but it's like a kid because of the way they have to treat that, that, that pet that becomes part of the family, the amount of energy, the time, you know, the, 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 um, you know, effort, you know, you know, and, and listen, these pets ain't cheap, you know, you see some of the bills that these people going through that, like you are investing financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, um, you know, as well. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can understand why he, what he meant, what he meant. And my thing is, listen, if you don't like their dog, you don't, you know, then this relationship probably is going to look some type of way. So I don't really want them to think, I, don't, I mean, listen, Chas gets all the smoke all the time and he will continue to, but the reality of the situation is I don't think he was making any bad comments about him, you know, when he compared the kid to to the children to, to, to Vanessa, right? It, it was him just trying to let her, trying to give her an idea of what it's like. You have children and how would you feel if I dismissed your children? Right, we'd all agree that if that person dismissed their children, they shouldn't even be involved with that person. Right, we might even go as far as say that person's rude. How are they gonna dismiss your kids? How are you gonna dismiss someone's dog? 
I know. I uh, come from my perspective. This is new to me, but I I've begun to understand a bit more. You 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 can't dismiss someone's dog. You know what I'm saying to you? They live with that dog 24 seven, and that probably that dog was there before you. He gonna be there when you ain't there. So if I was you, I'd start fighting the dog. I start loving it. Okay, all right, okay, and start getting on board because that dog ain't going nowhere. Nobody's sending that dog anywhere. And we've seen this before, married at first sight, um, with um old boy and old girl. What's her name? Uh, and it didn't work out. Alexis and Justin? Dog. Yes. That, how dogs, you know what I'm saying? Like, play a role in a relationship. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It's a huge thing. So, yeah. Um, Chas can get all the smoke, but not on this occasion. I don't think it was about um, him trying to necessarily say, you know, to dismiss her having kids and stuff like that, or anyone having kids. It was more just to give an understanding as well, you know. Um, any other thoughts on this, Chas and Vanessa situation before we move it on? I just want to say people like the dogs more than the more than the people. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it ain't just like they equal. I can see why. The dogs be because the dogs don't be providing no drama, just love, just vibes. What is actually not to love? I mean, I get. Well, right hold up, because Justin's dog was providing some drama. <laughs> oh yeah, some of them. Are, some of them are a little. Some of them are a little dramatic, right? But I think a perfect example is my my brother has a pit bull. And I'm a very afraid of large dogs, and, but I still try to show the dog love. And, and now I'm getting better and better and better, but I still have a fear like Lorraine, like you do of large dogs. They just like any dog that I feel like could take me out. It's like a subconscious, you know, fear, even though he's the sweetest dog ever. So I get, I, I get it. Right. But dogs just be, y'all be mad at the, at the Caucasian persuasion for liking their dogs more than they do people. But I be understanding it, child. I, they don't. They be just vibes, just good vibes. So that's a side note. Yeah, and and um, I just want to, you know, because I was probably the most passionate about my little dog journey, and I think that I I do want to say that I think it's important that you don't force your dog on people. You know, I don't come from that perspective. You know, like I'm not gonna push my dog on somebody that doesn't like dogs. I'm gonna force you to be in an interaction. I think dog owners and pet owners in general need to be respectful of other people. Like I hate when I'm walking my dog in the community and people don't have th their dog on leashes. Like I think, yes, people need to be respectful. Um, but I just want to lean into us having more empathy and not being dismissive. I think that's the broader question. Yeah, could Chaz have done something differently? A hundred percent. But I think the bigger thing is Vanessa could have been more empathetic. And that's what I, I keyed into is there was an element of selfishness and dismissiveness in the way she approached the dog thing. And I think that's what, you know, my, my goal is let's talk about it. Let's like lean into what that's about. And if you, you know, you navigate your relationship that way, it's going to come out in other ways. So it's the dog today. It could be something else tomorrow where you feel like this isn't of importance to me. So I don't care about it. It's it just, and even though it's of importance to that person. Keep them dogs out the grocery store, please. Well, well, if it's their support Ow. animal, Ow. don't roll your eyes. <laughs> You're good, Jay. We your family. It's not a big deal. You know what I mean? I'm laughing at Seaway. <clears throat> Tell her don't roll her eyes and <laughs> support. That's animal. why I'm drawing the line. When I see these dogs next to the fruit, it it immediately pisses me off. <laughs> not next like, to the fruit. Like this is this is where the dog is not a child. The dog could have stayed home alone for five seconds for you to go to this grocery store and go home. <laughs> like, why is the dog by the fruit? That is be pissing me off. That's the side note. <laughs> You gonna have the you gonna have the dog lovers association on our ass, um, but uh, <laughs> I definitely hear you. Dogs by the fruit aisle, no bueno. All right, um, let's uh, shift it again. Someone said no dogs in the bed. Absolutely, I hear you. I definitely hear you. Are you gonna stay single that way? You know, that, um, that's, that's Sean's rule. That uh, don't put that in your mouth. That's Sean's hard rule right there. No dogs in the bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor Abby. And I agree with him. I broke it a couple of times though when I was going through my chemo. But yes, generally no dogs in the bed. Yes. Well that that's because Abby sensed something wasn't right. She was like, I got to get up here next to you. That's it. My dog's there five pounds, so he don't count. He can sleep wherever he wants to sleep. Excuse me. He's five pounds. 
Seaway gonna make it for a reason. Oh my God, Seaway! Her bed anyway. He could fall out there anyway. He's he's five pounds. Life is already hard enough being five pounds. Sleep wherever you want to sleep. Seems like you need to bring him to the grocery store so you can fan him up a bit. Exactly. <laughs> he eats all my bacon, all my eggs. I don't know. He's just a baby. At this point, yeah, you're right. Bring him to the grocery store because he's only five pounds. So bring him to the grocery store. He's Ain't a five pound little play. rat. They thought he was a rat the other day. I felt really bad. Yeah. He <laughs> like wasn't. Oh, you, you, you took wickedness on your dog. No, they, they really thought he was a rat. <laughs> Outside, they shout out to Doc. What is the, the wait, wait, is, dog's the name? That part is some rats bigger than him. Yeah, they really didn't think he was a rat. <laughs> that, how they small is this dog? What is he? Three pounds and a he's, few ounces. He's five. He's five. Oh, pounds. He's five. Oh, he but he's black, food. and they thought he was a rat because it was dark outside. So they thought the rat was following my husband. They they screamed, but it was rainbow. <laughs> and I <laughs> called him a rat too, but now he they actually thought he was a rat. Poor baby. It's okay. No worries at all. All right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, moving on to the next part um, of the show. I don't even know what the next part is at this point. Oh, okay. Well, we actually didn't talk about his leaving, but anyway, that's my, we'll move on. Um, next part we're going to talk about, obviously, Maya and Laron. She's giving him another chance. Um, you know, or oh, it seemed like I can't lie to you. The body language was telling me that she didn't want to give another chance. In fact, <laughs> body language is telling me I don't know why I gave him a chance in the first place. Um, body language is telling me, listen, um, you know, I, it, you know, I'm embarrassed to say I'm giving her a chance. I, I don't, you know, I, you know, I, you know, Lauren, you know, I appreciate Lauren, but I've been saying this from the very beginning of the season. The body language, if I'm watching that back, I'm not calling her again. I promise you I'm not calling her again This itch that you do when you're like this And your face looks like you're in pain Listening to the story back about how he likes you Yeah, at that point I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm saying body language for me Was saying oh, Why am I here? You know what I'm saying to you? Um, so, but I don't know That's my thought process um, And I have been wrong uh, Notably um, So, you know, hey Maybe I'm reading too deeply into the body language, and I gotta be okay with that. You know what I'm saying? To you. Um, what's your thoughts on the Maya and Lorraine, 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 Lorraine? Don't put Lorraine in it. She Sorry, she had Lorraine. enough. She had enough from last weekend with Will. Don't put Lorraine in it. Lorraine said, "Keep me out of it." Sorry, Lorraine. She fell on the floor now. Oh. Uh, my, Maya said, and Ron. <laughs> oh my gosh! Said, Get somebody else to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I got to speak out because you know I'm going to put my piece of cape on. And listen, late breaking news. I'm so excited for your interview with Maya. You know, next week I'm gonna be the number one fan, acting just a pure fool. So just get ready when the interview comes. Y'all can call me all types of panderers. Say what you want. I'm gonna be pandering in the chat. But yeah. I'm glad you peeped it, Kojo. I'm glad you took your little piece of cape on for your little brother, Laron, because Maya was looking like, yeah, I just want to spare you. Because according to her, she done denied that man several times more than Peter denied Jesus. Okay? She done denied him. <laughs> Is she just being nice to him? Now, I think we need to hold her feet to the fire about why she even left that room to, you know, even have a little door open, you know, she should not be playing Bruno Mars. I'm going to leave the door open. It should be shut, closed, padlocked, you know, double lock. What are those, the, the locks from both sides? All of that. So, yeah. JR. Oh, see Oh, no, see you. Might, you, you go in, see No, okay. Go for it, JR. Yeah, I gotta say, it looked like she was just there so she don't get fined. Um, I, I'm also a bit confused. You're not feeling the brother, so I'm not sure why you 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 you're putting it out there that you're giving him like a window of opportunity. Listen, you're not feeling him. It was over, done with. All right. And again, you could have avoided a lot of shenanigans, not just her, but Laron as well. You need to understand Laron, man. Look, the girl that you like doesn't like you in the same way that you like her so you just have to accept that 
and you know be grown about it and walk away stop chasing her like it's okay to pursue to show your interest but the moment she has decided repeatedly to not want to pursue something with you in the same way that you want to your goals don't align in that case it's like you're trying to force it now like stop trying to put her under duress to the point where she changes her mind she's not going to change her mind it doesn't matter about how much drinks you buy her at the club how much food restaurants none of that stuff matters you're trying to buy her now all right she she's not interested so um yeah that's what confused me she knows she's not feeling the brother but she's still talking about yeah you know i'll give him a little opportunity yeah, no he's he, listen it's done it's done all right and um i think this is a an, another lesson like like you said a teachable moment like we started off with guys it's okay if the lady is not feeling you you know there's other fish out there you're not committed you haven't had years together or anything like that it's still early in the process you move around you work the room now all right um but i think laron got too invested um he was chasing those waterfalls and um you know he had to learn the hard way and now it's gotten messy and petty between them too so that's sad to see and it could have been avoided if uh he had been more receptive to what she was actually trying to say which is probably that she's there for a good time with him but not a long long time the guy that she's actually looking for is not Laurent all right she she shed tears when I think William got eliminated that's probably where her uh her thoughts were or her feelings were at that point but not Laurent I, I think Maya saw enough at that point and she didn't want to be dating Laurent anymore. I mean, even on what we saw already, we saw enough. And then imagine what's happened since the reunion. I think this, the lesson is if you see something that you don't like, you just got to be direct and cut them off. Cause when you rip the bandaid off slow, you're going to make stuff worse. Like she saw how Laurent was moving, that it wasn't going to work for her. You got to cut people off hard the first time because leaving that door open is the reason why we're here today. So I don't even know if it was just, the uh, you know, at first I thought it was the looking, you know, looking for someone who will allow her to be hypergamous or whatever it is. And maybe that was part of it, but I think she was also trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and, and trying to give the process a real shot. And then Laurent was doing what he's done, even on our, even on Little Black Book and other platforms. He acts nice, then he acts a fool. Then he acts nice, then he acts a fool. It's a lot of push and pull, push and pull. You say you're going to take down pictures, you don't do it for a whole week. She probably saw enough. But when you see enough, cut the man off. Don't leave no door open, no cracks. A lot of men don't understand cracks. They don't understand gray area. You leave a gray area, he thinks he still has a chance. It's a hell no. And that's why she's giving him a hell no now. But it probably should have been a hell no back then because of the way he acts. Lying, manipulating, tugging, yelling, uh, being aggressive. She should have been cut him off. And now I think, I'm sure she's learned. I'm sure she's learned that. You cannot be nice to some people. <clears throat> Go for Lorraine. Yeah, Maya didn't like William either, JR. Um, she didn't shed a tear at all. She couldn't wait for him to go. She didn't like any of the men there. She didn't. None of them were her type. Let's be for real. Um, so when she said, uh, the door's not closed, I said, sis, if you don't stop lying. Like, what you said, Koji, that her body language, she was literally holding on to her body for dear life, like not wanting to let her body expose herself, that she was not interested and she was not giving him a chance. I noticed how, I don't know if it was maybe through like the whole reunion or just what they decided to show, 
she didn't talk as much. And I'm like, I honestly believe production was behind her giving all these men a chance. I honestly do. So this whole maybe let's let's just because how can we only have one couple? So maybe let's have a maybe and see and see what happens. But she was not interested in that man. And I say this, I actually have a soft spot for Laurent, you know, because he is quite likable. I, you know, I like a, a chubby, cute guy. You know, he is quite likable. But he he has a wounded inner child, <laughs> which likes to come out now and again, right, when he's triggered or when um, things don't go his way, right? That's where you see the emotional, uh, the lack of emotional regulation, the way that he just erupts like a volcano, pause. But like, it's because he has just the inner child when he gets rejected or when he feels he's been taken advantage of, when he feels like he's not being appreciated. And that's when he acts a fool. That's where we see one minute he's being nice and seemingly um you know grown up and then the next minute he's behaving like a two-year-old because that's his inner child showing up to say oh my god oh my god we're being taken advantage of uh we're not being loved here and i think if he just literally sat in his lover boy era he would be great like just fully accept you want to be a lover boy he is a lover boy at heart but because he has his wounds as most people i don't even know his childhood I, I didn't watch i don't watch the 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 interviews because i just feel like you're not going to tell me anything that i don't already know but you you showed you showed us right so i don't know his childhood but i i feel like there's an inner child issue happening there um and you know the fact that he he i did catch no i did catch alive where you guys were talking to him and then he was saying i've done so much i've done so much for her i did this i did that well you're you're changing for somebody else that is the problem it's not sustainable you're making all these changes of not going out of doing this because you want to win her over but when she acts seemingly uninterested that's when you go back to your old ways or that's when you're like oh you you were using me this that, and the other but you're not being yourself you're not being your your authentic self if you want to be going out wednesday to sunday go out wednesday to sunday or if you want to change change because you want to and you don't want to do that this whole i'm bored and i'm lonely we uh, are is because i don't have anyone to know if you want to change don't wait until you find somebody to become who you want to be embody the person that you want to become get the help that you need in order for that to happen i just think that deep down he's a really sweet guy and i do have a soft spot for him he comes across like a like a sweet guy but you just need to one grow up like that's me being nice and to get the help that you need like that inner child is screaming screaming and no grown woman is going to tolerate that because it's literally like dealing with a child um yeah <clears throat> skip me skip me right now yeah, I just want to add context too, and I mean, I think we'll, you know, it'll be good that you can get get Maya on to talk to her, because I think you know what we've seen between the lives, the you know some of the things that transpired on the show, some of the interviews on YouTube. Unfortunately, Laurent has displayed him to be somebody uh, himself to be someone that can mislead people, can be dishonest, can be manipulative. Um, you know, and I, that to me is where the issue lies when it comes to him. Uh, I, I do. And I said it earlier, you know, even, you know, with my little cape on for Maya, I think she just has to set firmer boundaries when it comes to, to people. And when you see somebody's behavior, uh, you know, not leaving doors open, because I think she had enough information. If we look at what transpired up until even her exiting the show early, uh, to really know enough about his character to not want to reopen that door. Uh, you know, I, I don't think Laurent is somebody that is unlovable or shouldn't be in relationships, but he has to do work. He has to do self-examination. Every time we hear him talk, whether it's about the breakdown in his relationship with, with um, 
Koshia, um, or and, and and we heard really not on the show about Maya, but he's he always blames. It's everybody else. Anybody that always blames the other person has a reason when they when they overreact. You know, like when he talked about how he behaved in the club. You know, there was a reason for it. You know, and then he just wants us to move on, but he doesn't really deep the reason. Like you really don't understand why you're so triggered. Why is he so concerned about being a simp? Like, have you really delved into who you are as a person? And are you really secure? You know, he keeps saying, oh, I'm not insecure, but you're showing insecurity. You know, we had that conversation on the panel with him and he was like, I'm not insecure. Yeah, it doesn't mean you think you're the lowest person, but there is something about yourself that you feel a trigger when you when you feel somebody's devaluing you. You know, so that is an insecurity where you feel a lack. Um, and then you act out, you give all these gifts. Like, why do you feel like in order to have a relationship with somebody, it comes <clears throat> as a transaction, you know, like, oh, I have to do this in order to do that. Even if you looked out how the whole, you know, how he was touting this whole reunion party that he did last weekend, you know, I'm the king of da, 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 da. I'm going to take care of everybody. I'm going to do it. Why do you feel like you need to bring people in in that way in order to get attention and win over people? People should like you for you. So spend more time on getting to know who you are as a person versus trying to do all these flashy, showy things, what you think are going to attract people to you and use yourself as the magnet. It shouldn't be things that draw people to you. It should be you that draw people to you. And guess what? When people are drawn to you, those are the people that are typically for you. When people are looking for things to be drawn to you, they're not drawn to you, they're drawn to the things. And I think that's the issue with Laron. And then he builds a narrative, builds a story around why he does the things he does versus looking at himself and looking at the things that what's happening to him and how he has these outcomes that aren't favorable. You know, like, so that's my thought. I just wanted to say something as well. Like the thing about Laron for me personally is he has these childlike tantrums. Like he literally will just start raging and ranting. And like when you look at, you know, unless there's some stuff that's obviously been edited, it is an edited TV show, but it just doesn't align. <laughs> the level of rage and anger he has doesn't align with what's, what's actually happening to him, right? Um, he showed to me that he was very insecure. Why? Because with the Koshia situation where they had connected, then she disconnected and tried to work the room, he snapped. Right? He went cold towards her. Like He was like, listen, I'm not even going to touch you. No. Nah. And he got up, stormed off, this, that, the other, right? As you rightly pointed out at the time, Chaz tried to do the white knight in or whatever you suggested, right? Now, then Maya was present for that because he tried to use Maya as a prop to get Koshia jealous when they were going through their little situation. So Maya saw how he reacted in that moment. And then, so after Koshia has gone home and they stay on the show together, she's already seen examples of how he can get, right? When the uh, the WhatsApp group chats started to be a factor, he was the one instigating and initiating a lot of that coming to the forefront, right? And when he was uh, challenged about it, going back and forth with uh, Will and some of the other castmates about it, he, again, flies off into a rage. Now, fast forward to him and Maya having alone time, he's finally landed the girl that he's been plotting to get the whole time. And he goes and stuffs it up by, again, having another insecure moment, which leads to a rant and a rage. That's problematic because that means when he doesn't get his own way, he's going to get like he's going to go uh, hostile very quickly. And every single season. I am consistently going in on the most hostile people because I think that they are causing detriment to themselves and detriment to other people in the process. Show's meant to be about finding love. So when I see someone act up like Laron this season, he is the, the person that I zoom in on who's ranted the most, who's been at the center of the most controversy, the snake, if you will. Like he is the person that for me needed to be avoided. And that's why I think Maya 
could have used more um, initiative in distancing herself from him instead of continuing to take the drinks, the dates, the restaurants, the bars, the clubs. I get it. In her line of work and with her personality and his personality maybe aligning with the nightlife to some degree, I can understand why she would want to continue to pursue it, but I don't think it was a smart move to, to leave that window of opportunity open because now you're giving him false hope and now he's going to continue to try and outdo himself every time hoping he's going to win you over and you know it's not so that's going to lead to him feeling more and more frustrated and when you do get into a heated argument now that's when that rant and that rage is going to keep escalating because it's going to keep happening to him and he's finding no success so with that lack of success comes more frustration equals more tendency to rant about said situation. So that's why I think Laurent's problematic. <clears throat> that's right. Speak your speak, look, JR. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more thoughts on this Maya and Laurent situation? Yes, Lorraine, go for it. Oh, no? Okay. All right, cool. We're going to shift it. Um, to the well, let's shift it to the fact that the receipts were released on the show. Okay, uh, it said that Will and Alexis were plotting and William um, for the receipts. I want to get your thoughts on this situation, how, what you garnished, what you gleaned uh, from it, um, and how you saw it as well. What was your thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. I want to get your thoughts, guys. Who should I go to first? Eh? Yeah, shall I go to the ladies? Hmm? Since I'm at the Melbourne Fest. Eh? Uh, Seaway, talk to me. Skip me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> I love you nominated, Lorraine. Spokeswoman Lorraine, you've been nominated. Um, you know, they showed the, 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 the phone and it had the, the comments, obviously, from Will and him having his inside woman as well. Um, who was getting information from? What was, the, what was your thought process? What was you seeing? What was you gleaning? I mean, it's like the pot killing. What's what's the saying? The pot, the pot, something black. black. Yes, thank you. They're all problematic. I'm sorry. They were all in the group chat. Somebody was saying something problematic at some point. Um, it just so happened that. Will Will's comment was, you know, repeated out, and he, he lied saying I didn't say that, and then obviously Tony, Tony, um, Tommy, whatever, read it out. So they're all problems. They were all in the group chat for a reason. They should, they, they, they should not have been chat. So for Laurent to say, oh, I've got the receipts. What were you saying? I want to see what everybody was saying. Well, what was Dom saying? Right? What was uh, Will saying? Well, what were you saying, Levon? I want if you're gonna show the receipts, don't just show what one person said, right? So even though I'm not a fan of Will, <laughs> like you're all problematic, you know, because they showed an unseen unseen bit of Dom when um Mika was kind of um uh, you know, what have you said about him? So I thought, ah, oh, okay. So this is why you, you even like him in the first place, but he was also talking some smack. They were all saying things that they should not have been saying. They should not have formed that group because it just did not make any sense to me. It just shows that they all saw it as a game. It wasn't just Will. They all saw it as, you know, we all want to be at the end for whatever reason. They all do this every season where they want to, like, be the last man standing. And as far as I'm concerned, they're not getting paid that much. And yes, you get the extra TV time, but you literally get 15 minutes of fame. I can't even remember most of these people's names. Ask me about people from last, I don't know. Literally, I don't know who these people are. The only people that I know is Clifton and Joy, only because they've got now a separate show, right? So I don't understand the fascination of wanting to, let's eliminate this, I want to, this, that, and the other. And I think, Maybe that's how Ready to Love is kind of casted, that they just go to people who, who are fame hungry, who just want their 15 minutes of fame. Because some of them, I'm like, what, what are you even doing on this show? You, you know what I mean? Like, what is happening? So that's my two cents about that. But 
I wasn't going to say it, but for William to then say, well, at least I've got money, I thought, oh, God, here we go. You couldn't just keep it to what we're talking about now. You have to talk about your millions, sir, sir. I just feel like, oh, he's probably at dinner now. He's probably going to hop in again, to, you know, to put me in my place in his Rolls Royce. But I just think that's your argument. Every single time something that, you know, you don't get your way. Well, I'm rich and you do this. I feel like, yes, you've come from somewhere just because you understand that you didn't have anything. You understand why you act the way that you want to act. But if you have decided to go into a professional field of property development, right, you have to embody, right, the identity of a property developer. So that means that all this flashy, flashy business and all this I've got money. Like, I just don't, I can't relate. I can't relate. And he's probably going to say you can't relate because you're a million, you're not a millionaire. Fair, fair. But I just cannot relate to, yeah. And I just did, didn't appreciate the whole, if you don't have an argument or a rebuttal to what we're talking about now, let's not talk about like, why are you bringing finances? Is that the only thing that you have to bring to the table? And the fact that you only had one connection says everything about you as well i kind of feel like i'm just going in on will now but i just i just couldn't help it i had to kind of like get that in there quickly sorry yeah i'll be dying when the rain be going in on him uh yes they are yeah that sounded like some payback to me lorraine um be careful now but um <laughs> yeah listen Please, I, please. I, I, I heard that he had it. He had what? Please, no smoke. No smoke this way. I have a child. I have things to live for. Please. Listen, he got money. So be careful. Um, anyhow, his ears start burning. You know where he's coming. Right? Straight here. Um, yeah. So I, I do. I do understand your point. Like um, Will does lead with his money. Um, that's him. Right. That's how he shows up. That's how. His personality is formed after reaching the accolades he has. Everybody's different. Uh, my thing is on this is every guy from the first mixer was in this apparent group chat. And I haven't seen anybody check Laron directly for his shenanigans in exposing what they were talking about. Yes, they were in a group together as the men. And what they discussed was what they discussed in the lounge. But it would be naive to think that when they leave the show, they're still not going to communicate about the show because that's what they all have in common, right? Um, but they all have receipts. So I'm, I was expecting when Laron said, you know what, here, Tommy, here's what Will said. I was expecting William or Dominique, especially to be like, listen, that's not how it went. Listen, we're like, this is you saying we need to vote Kashia and Mika off. This is you, Laron, saying that. So you're trying to make it out and pass the blame on everybody else. You were doing it too. And if you felt so offended by it, why didn't you leave the group chat? It's simple. You just go to the options and select leave. But no, you wanted to stay there to collate information so that you can eliminate all the potential contenders that were gonna stop you from getting to Maya. And as far as I know from the guys, that they, they weren't all clambering after Maya like that. So it seems like he just used his personal beefs or personal dislikes for some of the other guys to get them out of here. And then as well as create some madness with Koshia to get rid of her at some point so that he can get to ultimately who he was enamored by, which is Maya. So I think he was very underhanded in doing that. And I'm surprised the guys didn't check him. But at the same time, I also understand that when, you know, is it really something to beef over? No. But you can still state your case and say, Laurent, look, man, like, I know what you're trying to do here, but let me set the record straight. And that way, you're not pandering necessarily, but you're defending your position more. Rather than saying, you know what, I'm not going to deal with him because we can take it to the street and it will be something different. That's my thoughts. I think the reason why no one called him out is, is that's be, that's the reason why Laron is, is, is Lyron is a little dangerous. He actually is very intelligent. I've called this out from the beginning and he was banking on other people being slow or slower than him. 
because if you're operating at a certain IQ, no shade, but I guess it's a little shade, that would have been the first thing that you would have said, both at the house, the lake house, and on the reunion stage. Everything that he was accusing these people of, he was a part of. And Will, instead of just saying, like, dude, you're calling us out, but you're, you did this, he starts lying himself. But it's like, why would you do that when you know if LaRon is bringing it to the reunion, he has receipts for you. So why are you lying about stuff that you should know if he's bringing it up, he got receipts. LaRon knows that. And that's the reason why I said, I told LaRon when he was up on Little Bag, I said, you were very diabolical for what you did to Will. Because you know Will is it wasn't prepared for that. And you banked on him not to be able to, William, you banked on him not to be able to get his words together. And that's how you got him up out of the house. And that was not very nice. So, Laurent, I know he got his little cheeks and he looks all like he's adorable and harmless. No, he's a liar. And he's using his God-given intelligence, which I can recognize, for bad. That's what he's doing. And on top of that, he's being manipulative. So. And, you know, again, I'm going to, only reason I'm going to address this is I got to back Lorraine to this point. I know y'all, y'all, y'all got your capes on, except for I only see you guys in the after comments. I never see you guys in the live. You guys have the capes for Will and the capes for Alexis. Why you guys got your Superman capes on for both of them, I will never understand. But the fact is, is that Will, yes, I do believe that he's a real estate developer. I do believe that. But I will just say that his flashiness, including wearing a big oversized Flavor Flav chain to the reunion, does not normally coincide with any person with any amount of money. Now, I'm not saying he don't. He says he does. I actually believe he does, right? But the way he acts constantly does not like does not act like any successful person that I have ever met. So that's on Will. Y'all can bang on y'all chest all day, talk about, but he's a successful real estate developer. Well, he's not moving in this world like one. You could be a doctor, but if you're moving around like a streetwalker, is anybody going to believe you? Are you going to be mad that someone doesn't know that you're a doctor because you're moving around like a street rocker, a streetwalker? Whose fault is that? That's like when people, I be seeing so many lawyers, they'll pull up to the courthouse in sweats and be mad that, that the security didn't want to let them in. You're pulling up to the courthouse in sweats. You don't look like an attorney. Whose fault is that? Yours. Not security for using common sense to be suspicious of a person wearing sweatpants talking about they're an attorney. So that's my thing. Will, Will is a walking conundrum. And if he wants to live his life like that, he can live his life like that. But he's constantly going to be second guess by everyone as long as he lives his life the way he does and that's on him that's his burden to bear but all of them are very silly and will has proven himself to be a liar too because he got lyron to catch to catch him up in a lie so not everybody lying i'm trying to figure out who's not a liar on this cast who's not a liar rashina Lay, no, Laylin lying too, because I don't think, I don't know what type of emergency she had. So I don't know. It seems like everybody lying. Who was not a liar? Everybody got a lying problem. A little lying problem. Shout out to Ms. Misha. Everybody's out here lying. Y'all said Tommy not lying. <laughs> oh, Lamar not a liar. Y'all may have a point. Y'all may have a point. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is that um, I kind of had a differing opinion from everybody around Will, and I'm still in that, that ballpark where I just feel like people get to show up how they want to show up. May not be the way I choose to do it, but, you know, I I happen to respect his hustle. You know, I'm not saying I agree. Like, as my opinion has evolved, like, I don't have to like everything about somebody to see a little bit of truth or see a little bit of, you know, their success. So I don't really have a problem with the way he navigates life. I've, you know, 
been in banking and I've just happened to come across all different types of people. So that informs my experience and my opinion. So my POV is slightly different. Like I never, I never doubted his wealth. I never doubted who he was. I've seen people walk through the bank, walk in banks when I used to physically work in the bank. And I saw people that you would never assume. And it just taught me that you can't necessarily take somebody's surface and then make an opinion. Now, does does sometimes it, it, is there truth to it? Of 100 percent. But I don't just um, I don't just, you know, rest on those things. So that's that for Will. When it comes to, I think, the Laron thing and the group chat messages, I don't like that. And I've probably said that before. Like, I hate when people start bringing up like a group chat text message receipt because it's like at the end of the day, like our panel has a group chat, right? So the three of us, the four of us are in a group chat together. In any one given space and time, somebody could take a section of that group chat and make one of us look bad. But are we scrolling all the way up to the top of that group chat? when somebody else has said something like, I think like if we're talking about people, if you're going to talk about people and talk about things, don't try to like leverage. Oh, I have this section or I have this part where this person, but we're all participating in it. So that's the part I don't like about the whole group chat foolishness because yeah, I can take a step. I can take a snapshot of this. It's going to make me look real bad. And then I could take a snapshot of that and make somebody else look bad. Or I can eliminate the part that makes me look bad and just give you the part that talks about this other person, you know, but we're not scrolling up to see things in context. Sometimes a conversation goes one way and then it veers off into something else. So I'm like, I don't even give that any weight to me. That wasn't a big deal. Like at the end of the day, I don't care. Show me your group chat receipt. If you were in it, you were party to the conversation. Did you correct the person in the group chat? Did you say, oh no, you're wrong. You shouldn't be talking like this. I disagree. Or did you let the comment rock? So I don't really care about your group chat receipts. I don't really care about any of that stuff. You can keep it. Um, it doesn't prove anything because at the end of the day, everybody talking. So that's what I think about that. Any more, any more thoughts, guys, on that on those receipts? No? But I definitely hear you listen. Group chats, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm sure if I'm in one. I remember, I, remember, um, I think, before uh, last year, someone uh, hacked one of, uh, one of my guys' um, Instagrams in the group chat we were in. And then the person was exposing all the conversations we had. Now, thank God. <laughs> thank God. Thank God I was uh, minimalizing my conversation in that chat. Don't worry about my duvet. It's cold. And, um, you know, and uh, <laughs> let me tell you, it's like when the group chat got exposed, <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> I can't lie to you. And so uh, I personally think to myself, listen, in group chats, nobody's clean. Nobody is clean, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I say stuff in, and we and we are conversing about certain stuff. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So, things that I said behind the scenes, and they were all plotting, and they were all lying, and they were all doing what they were doing. So, like, nobody comes out clean. So, it is a bit cheeky. Like I said, I think both parties, both Laurent and Will, they're plotting, but uh, Will took the fall for it. I'm going to need Will to be a little bit more sharper, though. You know what I mean? They're coming for your neck like that. You've got to be sharp with the responses. You know what I mean? But, hey, that's a story for another day. All right. Um, we're going to move on, then. Uh, obviously, uh, we had a situation with, um, I would like to say, um, they had a, the couch conversations, and they were telling us about people that were together. In fact, let, <clears throat> let's do Justin Mika first. Because you know what, I want to get out of the way. Justin and Mika, um, they are together and um, they did press them a little bit on um, on their situation in terms of him not wanting kids, etc. I want to get your thoughts. Uh, do you believe that Justin and Mika situation, this is uh, that he doesn't want, uh, I shouldn't even say he doesn't want the kids, but he's okay not having the kids. I get why they pressed him on the show about it because I remember at the beginning he was saying, he didn't mind not having kids, but also said he wouldn't mind having kids. So it's like, it's a very interesting situation when you kind of 
put it in that perspective, whether he really is comfortable with that long term. So I want to know your thoughts on this. Um, uh, what's your thoughts on it? Yes, yes, see, we go for it. I just want to say, in theory, the way Justin spoke about Mika and the way he spoke on having a woman, regardless of whether that whether she could give him kids or not, is how men should speak on women. And it was very refreshing because, you know, you're you're really supposed to pick a wife first. And then whether kids come with that, that that's that's not always a given, right? And so the way that he spoke on her, I was like, wow. I mean, he's a breath of fresh air for this cast, if he's being serious, if we can take him seriously. Um, if they're still together to this day, I mean, I'm going to have to take him somewhat seriously, right? I will say, though, knowing that a woman doesn't want kids from the beginning and know that you do from the beginning, that's where it may it leans into an unequally yoked situation. And I just don't think that's one of those things that you want to compromise on. Um, and I pray that maybe he was lukewarm about it and she doesn't want kids and he's okay with that. Only he knows that. But I don't think it's ever good that if you know you want kids and you know someone is for sure does not want kids, you don't want to push either one into a situation that they're not comfortable with. But if he's lukewarm and he found or, you know, somewhat cold on the idea, and he found a woman that he really likes and it works for them, then it works for her. But I do want to be positive And I just want to say, like, you just don't see a lot of men on Ready to Love and even on TV speaking light. To, uh, to their women, woman being positive um, and being refreshing. And I did want to say that that was actually really, really nice to hear. And I wanted to call Cap so bad, but I was like, you know what? I'm not sure it feels like Cap. And if they're still together, maybe it's not Cap, you know? Um, so yeah, I just thought, I just thought that was good. Whether it works out or not, we, I don't know. That's for them to find out. But it was nice to see that they tried. So, yeah, I, I think uh, one of the reasons why Mika was able to connect with Justin is the fact that he was lukewarm on the idea. He wasn't one of the guys that was like hundred percent like, "Listen, I want my own kids." This, that, the other. He didn't really state it like that. I think what um, kind of helped him. In, in his quest to eventually end up with Mika is he was like, listen, if I meet someone that wants to have them, then we can have them. I, I want that. If you have kids already and you don't want any more, yeah, I'm still open to exploring where we can go with it despite that. So to me at the time, I must admit, I felt like, man, you're talking out both sides of your mouth. Which one is it? Because if you have kids, it's definite, right? Do you want kids? Like that's a, but he may not be at that stage where he's ready to necessarily, you know, he may not feel like he's a hundred percent ready to take on that responsibility, that role and all that other stuff or whatever his personal reasons may be. The bottom line is he's not there. So I think, he, you know, um, the only bad thing that can happen potentially, and I'm not wishing it on them, but the only bad thing that pot could potentially happen is if they get further down the road, maybe in a few years time, and then he starts to realize like, you know what, I don't have kids of my own, but now you've got so many years invested in her and you've got now got to know her kids, then now you're at that crossroads where you're going to have to probably way up whether it's worth walking away from that relationship and trying to find someone that aligns with your beliefs and that's going to be harder to do so um we just have to see how it goes at least they made it to a relationship kind of uh connection by the end of everything else because everybody else didn't so we gotta give them props for that it seems genuine you know there was genuine lip kisses they weren't edited um i think they're seen at the bridge was also very open um because Mika had her guard up for most of the season everybody was saying that but Justin was the one that kind of made her mellow out chill out they had some quality time in the bed at the retreat so yeah like um uh, you know this connection worked and we'll see how far it goes
Love that, JL. Thank you. Uh, Lorraine, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking where the disconnect was because on their last day on the, or the date with the brother, she Mika said that she wouldn't mind having kids with Justin, actually, that she was a bit open to it and that they would have cute babies. So I would have liked to just find out where the disconnect was because now at the reunion, reunion she was now saying it was a hard no. Um, so I thought that was interesting. But um, Justin if I remember correctly, has been with women who have children. So for me, it seems like it, it, it's not like he's putting himself in a situation where um, he doesn't know what comes with that. So I really appreciate that. Um, I From their bridge scene, when he said it feels like love, I just, I just knew that it was because for, for him to, to say that first, not knowing what I'm, I'm sure they, they would have spoken about are we choosing each other and all that kind of stuff but I just felt like okay this is real it seems like it's real um regardless of what happened after whether they are still together whether they do break up I think that they genuinely cared for each other they had they have expressed that they love each other and I think it was only three months after they the bridge the the reunion so the fact that they've exchanged um I love yous it just seems like they 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 are in a good place. I think that, you know, in life, you 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 don't get the the you don't get everything that you want in life in a person. You're gonna get 80, 20. I think you just have to like what he was trying to say, assess, um, okay, am I going to miss out on the 80% for the 20%? And I think it's his decision to make whether the 20% of having children is um a big enough deal for him or not um whether he's made that decision or not i don't know but i think that it, you know there's always going to be things about your partner it depends if it's it's um non-negotiable so yeah it depends if it's, it's a non-negotiable for him that he definitely wants kids but it seemed like he was a bit lukewarm about it in the beginning but when she said that she would have his children he his face lit up he seemed happy so i'm not sure Either way, it was just lovely to see that it resulted in a happy couple, that they were genuinely happy, that there was chemistry between them, even sitting on that couch. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm rooting for them because I'm, listen, I'm a faithful and hopeful romantic. So I love love. I'm a lover girl. So I hope that they work out. Thank you, Lorraine. Uh, I don't know if Jay's available. If not, I'll skip you, Jay. Okay, I'll skip Jay. Um, Sean? Yeah, I think um, this is a sticky one because it's, it's rough. Because if he really does want kids... Uh, that can cause resentment down the line. That would be my only concern. Uh, if, if he truly does want kids, uh, she seems to really be dead set against it. Uh, people can change. So I, I also want to leave room for that. Um, I'm not sure why she would have said that to his brother. Uh, I, I really would want to dig into more about that. Like, why would she say that? And then she's like a total no. It's not even like, you know what? I'm open and we'll see how things progress. It might be something I'm willing to talk about, especially women bear the burden when it comes to, you know, having children. So uh, I, I just would want to know more about that. Uh, I know he said that, you know, he doesn't want to rule out somebody that he's come to really care about um, and, and uh, not miss an opportunity. So I totally understand that. But I don't, sometimes people can deny themselves something, but it's still cause, it's still because it's something that they want, it sows seeds that will grow into something else down the line. And I think if she really loves him, you know, and that's the other part too, which is a difficult conversation to have. If she really loves him, then, and she, she cares about him then she should let him go if she knows that he wants kids. Because if she's not willing to do it, 
You know, it, it has to come from both sides. And, and sometimes we selfishly hold on to people. And that's the dangerous thing about love because it's an emotion. Um, and if she selfishly holds on to him and knowing that he really in his heart of heart, because I think this is a deeper question. When you really love somebody and it's not just lust, it's not just the euphoria of a new situation, you know their heart. So if she taps into his heart and knows that he wants kids and she still goes on, that's selfish. It's selfish. You know what I'm saying? Because and and he has to take accountability for himself. I'm not saying it excuses Justin either, because if it's in his heart that he wants kids and this happens in real life, you know, a part of this kind of happened to me in my relationship, in my marriage. And it was kind of one of the bigger re reasons that we wound up ending, you know, so it wasn't like this, but it just plays out in this way. People have to be honest. And if you love somebody and you really love them then you have to want what they want. Not everything, but the important things matter. And if you know that person is denying a part of themselves to be with you, then you also need to be honest and upfront with them. So I don't know. I, I, I do love seeing uh, Mika smile and happy. I love the warmth that she showed and the nurturing when she was taking care of him at the, um, at the resort. I love seeing that part of, of her, but I, 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 I think like we also can't selfishly keep people in relationships because it serves us. A relationship should serve both people. It should be reciprocal, you know, and it's not 50 50 because it doesn't always pan out that way, but it should be. I should be feeding you. You should be feeding me. You know, you should be keyed into the things that make me happy. I should be keyed into the things that make you happy. My deepest, darkest wants, you should be a supporter of that. I should be a supporter of yours, you know? So I think she needs to examine that. Now, if they've come to an agreement, and people do this all the time in relationships, and this is where I'll end, because this could also be an outcome, they've made an agreement, and they've dealt with it from a healthy perspective to say, hey, listen, I'm fine to be in this relationship, then if that's an agreement they've made together and they're fine with that, then so be it. But it is a danger to, you know, also push down things that you want and think that it's going to go away because it, it typically it doesn't, you know. So I wish the best for them. I want it to work. I hope they're able to navigate this part. It is a very big part of a relationship. And I hope they're able to really dive in, talk about it, figure it out. And if he's fine with it, hey, I'm, I, I'm more than support them. I love to see Black love. I love to see people in healthy, happy relationships. So I wish them nothing but the best. That other part was a little part of my experience and also just things that I kind of see that could be issues when people start to negotiate things that they haven't really dealt with that are important to them. Cheers, Sean. Thank you for that. Um, listen, I mean, to be honest, I think the situation is tricky, but I think with kids, um, I said this before, um, you know, I think that if they if they both agree and he definitely is willing, not even willing, let me not say willing, he definitely doesn't necessarily want kids. I think so long as there's always that middle ground where you kind of open to it, I think that's tricky. Like if I, if I go in and marry you and then let's say a situation is right. Like for me personally, if I got married and I love my wife and we couldn't have kids, then I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm going to divorce my wife now because we ain't got kids. You know what I mean? The situation's a situation. Do you know what I'm saying to you? We might look at different options. And if those options are not necessarily viable, hey, maybe God is telling me, unfortunately, um, you know, the blessing of the children has not come to you. You know what I mean? And that's and that's something I'll have to deal with. Um, but if I go into a situation knowing that potentially, because even myself, just recently, I've been like, mm, do I want these little rug rats? I don't know. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I want these little regrets. I don't know. They're annoying. I'm annoying. They're annoying. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So when I go into a situation, I, I, you know, I might, I might be at a place where I'm saying, I might be at a place where I'm saying maybe I'm a little bit in between. But if someone says they definitely don't want kids, I'm gonna be like, ooh, oh, you are a baddie. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna work for me because I could change my mind. 
you know what I'm saying to you. So unless I'm a definite no, I wouldn't want to play with it. But if they believe they definitely are the same place, <clears throat> I'm, but I agree. I don't know who mentioned it, whether we'll see where Lorraine. I'm not sure, I, don't, I agree with the fact that pre previously earlier on in the season we saw, I'm open to it. But then now we're at, no, I don't want any more kids. That was confusing for me. I was like, wait, uh, which one are we choosing here? Um, you know, so that 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 was a little bit odd for me. I don't know what that was about. Whether that's a a question that's stop taking question I mean, an answer that's been taken out of somewhere else and put in somewhere or whatever because that's two different answers. So um, you know, I, I thought that was a little bit odd as well. Um, and I know she got she's got her kids already. She probably she's happy to be done, and that's fair. I wouldn't even I would understand it. Just let's just hope that he's not as someone said he's not denying himself at this moment because someone can be amazing. But it might not be amazing it because you have a compatibility issue, which is what will come back to in the end, if that is the case. Um, and I hope that it's not going to be a, <clears throat> I'm dating you for the first year or two, enjoying my time, treating you like the most amazing queen that she is, and you're the most king, amazing king that you are. But really in the back of your mind, you're hearing that voice. I do kind of want kids. Because this is the kind of situation that happens. You get married in this situation. The kids ain't coming because you ain't trying to do it. You're out here in the streets. And I, I don't want that situation. You know what I mean? So just a little sign of sake. Any more additions on Justin Amika? I just want to no. say, I think yeah. I think Justin is buying his... Justin has shown time and time again that although he was the most likable, one of the most likable men on the show, he also is really buying his time. Like he doesn't... He wants to take it as slow as possible. And he's going to really tiptoe and slow walk into this situation. And so that's the reason why I don't think it's that odd that he could say he doesn't want kids. Right. I mean, that he's okay with Mika not wanting kids, but he really not mean that because I think he's trying to take this at a snail's pace anyway. So that is like my only hesitation because if he was a man that I know, like he's like time is of the essence. I want this. I want that. I want to get married ASAP. Then if he said, oh, I'm with Mika, but if she doesn't want kids, I'm good, I would probably believe it. But because I know he's trying to take his time anyway, and it only benefits him for him to be laying laying up with Mika and the body yada yada for as long as he can before he commits to anything, then I'm not sure how, how serious I should take this. And now if he walks down the aisle with Mika and she's still talking about she don't want kids, then I'm going to have to believe it. But until then, I'm not sure. Yeah, like what JJ said, I'm not sure she's just not a phenomenal, beautiful, with a nice body placeholder. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't want to believe that, but I'm not sure. Because if you're not being super serious deep, deep down in your heart, it doesn't matter if a person has something about them that makes you completely unequally yoked. Because it's not getting there in your mind anyway. So that's, you know, I was listening to everyone. I think that's kind of my one little question about this is that how serious is he about this? But when he makes a very serious commitment, then I think we'll all know. Until then, uh, I'm not sure. Definitely, definitely hear that. Um, last, obviously, section of it is uh, talking about the fact that Patrice... Uh, was dating um, uh, William <laughs> the whole entire time, and um, <laughs> Vanessa was dating Dom. Um, I want to get you guys' thoughts on this because obviously I think Patrice one's more. I wouldn't even say surprising, but it doesn't make sense um, how they were still dating the whole entire time, but she wanted to hold uh, our boy um, Alonzo accountable when he was giving her the key. It's like, baby, so you was holding on to a trump card the whole entire time. Um, what's your guys' thoughts on this, uh, Patrice, and William, Patrice and William, and uh, Dom and Vanessa? Last, last thoughts on this. Don't worry, we're running away. Yeah, yes, Jr. Nice pop up. Go for it. <laughs> Just in time. Uh, yeah. Um, Surprising me that uh, they maintained their connection even after Dom was eliminated uh, because of the way she was 
riding so hard to try and get Chaz to choose her over everybody else. So I'm not sure if she was trying to create a scenario where she had two men to pick from and she was just going to eliminate one of them. Um, but maybe her connection with Dominique was that strong where, um, you know, she continued to uh, ride to the end for whatever reason. And then, you know, because she could have easily self-eliminated when Dom went, but she didn't. She she chose to stay on. So, you know, I wish them well. Like, they're probably more aligned than her and Chaz would have been, um, which is, a, again, a testament to them continuing to date and all of that stuff. Um, and Dom wasn't one of the problematic guys on the show. So, uh, yeah, maybe it worked out for the best sometimes. It's good to not get what you thought you wanted at the time. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, JR. Uh, Sean, what's your thoughts? Yeah, this is one of those situations where I think everybody's a little right and everybody's a little wrong. Um, it seems like if if we if, if it's true that Patrice and, and, and William were dating throughout the whole thing, even when she was still, you know, still keeping in touch, still hanging out um, while she had uh, Alonzo's keys, then we can't take either one of them serious, you know? And and I don't care if y'all still talking, like at the end of the day, just like she wants him to have better boundaries in his relationships with women from his past, you know, I, I'm not saying she was intimate with William. I don't know those details. I'm not trying to purport on it, but obviously they were in a dating environment. So if you are now seriously dating somebody else, you should be, you know, you should no longer be in communication with that person. So I think the waters got muddied and he just, dis I mean, uh, you know, he just trumped the card, <laughs> did something a little bit more egregious, but her hands wasn't clean, you know? And I think they had, unfortunately, um, they had a very gray relationship. So when you have a gray relationship, you're going to have gray or black outcomes. <laughs> and it went straight fade, uh, fade to black when she showed up in an unmarked car, you know, shout out to Monica. You know, when she rolled up in an unmarked car, it, it said all we needed to know that you don't just show up in a car you don't normally drive to somebody's house if you don't know things are wild. And if we believe it, that this, supposed incident happened three days after they were crossing the bridge together and professing feelings, then that means they were never serious at all. You know, so it's like I have a rough time being like, oh, my God, I mean, Alonzo should be held accountable for other things. But I'm really I don't take this serious, this situation serious, because it seems like she was playing and so was he. And both of them were just having a mosh pit of a pseudo relationship. <clears throat> See way. Okay. I don't have much for this coach. Okay, that's why. That's always Lorraine. Yeah, I don't see the issue here. I mean, they're all speed dating. So just you know what I mean? Like, right. what is, <laughs> no, seriously. Everyone is dating each other and they know they're dating each other. Just because one person gets eliminated from the show, right? It doesn't mean that you can't now continue having conversations, getting to know they don't know each other, they're still getting to know each other. Unless you have exclusively said that it's you and you alone. And, you know, I don't want nobody else. And I understand that you shouldn't be talking to anybody else or even self-eliminate. Why would um, Vanessa self-eliminate for Dominique? I mean, he, their bond wasn't that deep at that point. And same for, um, what's her face, Patrice. Even though she was crying up the place. So that was the biggest clue because she's the only one that bold when that, when that man left. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think it was the issue. They're just dating each other, getting to know each other. The only issue that I have is Patrice driving up to um, Alonzo's house, which leads me to believe, right, that that story could be a fake. 
that whole shit, like, I'm sorry. They are putting on a show. This is like a pantomime, honestly. That whole story could be absolutely fake because why are you bothered that he's moving on and he's he was, you know, having sexual relations with other women when you were, like, no. It's either that story's fake, but also it's a reality TV show, guys. Like, you know, these people, they have to have people who go up to the end. So whether you like somebody or you don't, whether you have a stronger connection with these people, you know, we don't know what conversations these people are having with production. So you'd be like, no, you know, you got to stay. And as far as I'm concerned, I thought it was production that got rid of people anyway. So it could be production that got rid of Dom before his time or, or William or whatever. So maybe they didn't want them to leave, which is why Vanessa was saying what well, she was so callous. When she texts, what's his face? Chaz saying, if you <laughs> if you weren't serious, it should have been you that would have been left. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just shows that this is this whole thing is an absolute joke. It is a game show. It's an absolute game show. And it just so happens as there's there comes up with genuine connections. So, no, I'm not surprised. And I don't think it's an issue at all. Like, listen, if you see a genuine connection with somebody in this circus of a game show, go for it. Do you got to do? Doggy, doggy, dog, what out here? Fellas, what do we have to say about this? Mm -hmm. I would just say, would you have the would you have the same opinion if it was a guy who was dating one of the ladies off the show, like in the same situation? Like if he continued to have relations or be dating someone outside of the process while still in the process, actively searching for connections, would you have the same smoke for a dude that did that? Absolutely. The process is a game show where they're dating each other. It's not like Love is Blind, where you go in there, you find one connection and you have to see that one connection through. You come in here and you're dating one person and one person. And amongst that, you identify your strongest connection. I don't believe half of these relationships, mind you. I just think it's by pure luck that they end up finding strong connections, right? They're just trying to create entertainment for us to, to, to watch and enjoy and then to talk about it in our panel. So absolutely, you can, if you want to continue still talking to that person and you don't have a strong connection where you've said we are exclusive, then I don't have any smoke for that. But if you've said that we're exclusive, we're not talking to anybody, I'll use Joy and Clifton, for example. If any, if either of them had continued talking to, to somebody who had left, that's an issue because they they have zeroed in. You know they're choosing each other. So that's a different situation. It's literally speed dating on diazepam. Right. And, and this is why I bring up that point because Vanessa was actually trying to push. It seemed like she was trying to push for, for exclusivity from Chaz. Like she wanted him to eliminate his other connections and prioritize his connection with her or focus on her more so that's why i kind of asked that question but let's be real uh a lot of the castmates were probably getting maintenance from somewhere while this process was going on like some of it we already know about some of it we'll never know and uh, they're adults and they're going to do what they're going to do like um but like i said my, my my whole thing with with that vanessa chaz situation is um she had you know she said that he should have eliminated on the show and and um why was he still there if he felt such a way about it she could have done the same thing right if if her connection with dom was like that um also for dom i would say look like you how did it feel to to watch her go after chaz in the way she did knowing that you were still uh you know trying to establish something with her like, was that something he was open to and relaxed about? He seemed that way, but we, we we don't know until... And even when he has done his interview, I don't think he really touched on it like that. 
but you know their relationship is probably still going to this day um in whatever form it is um and like i said the whole chess thing wouldn't have worked uh because they just were two different com completely different personalities so whatever drew them in terms of attraction to begin with it faded it got petty it got mean it got nasty at times on both sides you know they're labeling each other different names and stuff when it descends into that then it's not cool um, and at that point if you know you've got dominique in your back pocket the whole time i don't understand why uh, uh you know it had to go that far at the same time it does explain why she was so relaxed when Chaz and her had that bridge scene and the petrified rose and all that stuff because she wasn't pressed she already knew that she had a connection with Dominique that was growing. That's my opinion. JR, how you get to Chaz and Vanessa? <laughs> you lost <lonely. laughs> me. No, because it's, it's, it's the same thing as Patrice with uh, oh. Alonzo as well, right? Like Patrice is getting mad at Alonzo for um, having getting maintenance throughout the process or whatever, and also. Um, the fact that he met up with this chick, this this girl, um, to go to the supermarket, or whatever his convoluted story was. She had heat for that. But at the same time, um, she was going around to people's houses, giving them foot massages, getting to know them better. She was uh, also feeling William a lot more than, you know, she felt Chaz at the time, shedding a tear and all that stuff. So, you know, where I draw the comparison is, they both had other things going on at the same time. It wasn't, but the narrative that was trying to be created, maybe by editing or whatever, is that they were trying to lock down the person on the show, not dealing with anything outside. Okay, now I got you. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's, you know, it, it definitely, it's just like I said, they was both playing games. Uh, you know, I know we got Laurent in the chat activated. And I think, listen, the I, I just thank you for reminding me, JR, about the foot massages that Patrice was given in house cleaning. I, Patrice just was sending out so many mixed signals to me. I couldn't, I, I, I want to blame Alonzo too, because I'm sure some of the stuff he saw, even just picking up Chaz at the ninth hour to start hanging out, you know, to add him to her list and like talking about being, um, a sister wife in a joking fashion sitting there with Vanessa while Alonzo was off to himself at a picnic table. You know, like a lot of that, you know, it just didn't make sense. Oh, Laurent said that she was cheering him up. It wasn't anything sexual. Listen, choked and spanked wasn't sexual either, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. I, if, if I'm dating a woman, I don't want her chilling at Kojo or Jr's house, rubbing rubbing their feet. I'm sorry. I I don't want it. <laughs> and if you do it, you know, you know, Jay and Seaway will tell you. I'll pack your bags and my bags real quick. I'm out the door because that that to me that's that's too close. You know. So I think we just had a lot going on, and and Patrice is the one that ultimately said they were exclusive. So this is my thing. It's like, what are we doing? It's like, what are we doing here? You still continuing the connection with William? You know, I guess Alonzo apparently has his own stuff going on. Were y'all really over? Did you not return the key after the relationship was over? It's like, we got questions. And as we saw, some of these guys got foot faces, so... You know, you go around and massage the wrong foot, and somebody might take it more serious than than Laron did, right? Might want to massage you back or take it somewhere else. So, <laughs> well, you're not taking me out. Listen, um, you know, my, my perspective on this is right. Uh, you know, we've been quite nice. I think we've been quite nice to Pat uh, Patric Patrice um, because my only thing was I wouldn't have minded, but she was holding Alonso to the fire for four, about four days, saying about we were exclusive, I got a key, dagger, dagger, dagger. Meanwhile, 
you are here dating William and have been since the brunch. That for me is the hypocrisy. And for me, that I want to be honest with you is political behavior and it's diabolical. It is diabolical because really what you're saying is you wish you played him first. That's the only reason why you're vexed at him. So all that, all that stuff that you did in part one reunion where you were stressed about, about you played it like, oh, you know, he was there sleeping with a girl. Yeah, he should sleep with a girl because you're out here playing around with him. I'm just saying to you, like you out here playing around talking about someone else's behavior. Meanwhile, you had a, you had a joker in your back pocket. You know what I'm saying to you? Meanwhile, you had a joke in your back pocket. That's why I was so confused. I was like, wait, so you mean to tell me that we had, we had, we had to drag Alonzo for sleeping with that girl um, while his best friend? Yes, he lied, of course, yes. And he can get some smoke for that because he lied. He should have just told the truth, all right? But you were pulling up on unmarked cars. You know why? Because you're guilty. You're guilty. That's why you pull up on these unmarked cars and get annoyed and having to question the whole girl. Why would you question the girl? If you know you're talking to William in your back pocket, why would you question the girl? Right? Why do you need to? You don't need to because you, 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 you know what I'm saying to you? But when people are playing the game and when people think they've got you, hmm, like I always say, when you think you've got me, I've really got you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you? So, yeah. Any other thoughts, guys and ladies? I know ladies. Yeah, yes, Lorraine. you try to have two different arguments. You try to make two different points here, Kojo, right? Because her continuing to date William, right, I think is completely separate to her madness that she performed with with Alonzo. Like, I, like what I'm saying, I, I do think, it, I did say it's a bit mad. Why are you doing all of that? I think it's either that, that whole thing, that this whole thing was just fake. I don't believe anything that anyone's saying. All these interviews, I don't believe nothing. I'm not, like, it's all lies. So I don't see anything wrong in anyone continuing to talk or get to know somebody after they've been eliminated. I mean, Laurent was trying to get at Kashia uh, after she had left. She rejected him. Do you know what I mean? But he was still in the process. No one's talking about that. Do you know what I mean? So there's nothing wrong with continuing to. I do agree that she should not have come at him like that because you're talking to some. Why do you care? First of all, why are you not even exclusive if you're still dating like like William? So both of them is a joke. Like all of it, like all of them are foolish. All of them are problematic. Like I don't think one smoke, one person deserves to smoke more because they're all treating it like a game. That's what I'm trying to say. The reason why it's foolery is because it's a game for them. I we don't we don't know what's real or what's not real. I would love to think that Mika and Justin are real, like just for my own sanity, but we don't know. Like this is this is a literal this has been the worst season ever where they have highlighted that we are literally watching a game show. Literally. And they're thinking, what character am I gonna play? Like, how am I gonna show up at the reunion? How am I gonna be like messy so people can be taught? Like it's all ridiculous. So I think it's two different arguments here that we can't say that you can't continue to talk and get to know somebody because I don't think that's the case because it's a game show and they're all speed dating. However, all the other extra hoopla, completely unnecessary, but they have to do it because they have to give us some kind of storyline and something to talk about, which is all lies. It's all, I don't believe nothing. There was no girl. Has she cut, like, she needs to stand up. She needs to come forward and, and, and speak her case or something. I just don't believe anything that they're all saying. Going on lives, this, that and the other. Like, trying to milk their 15 minutes of fame. All up in the comments. They all say, oh, we don't care. But you all up in the comments. You do bloody care. You care. You care way too much. Right? Lorraine, did you miss my whole news segment? I put on this whole blazer and get up here. I had I had information straight from the source of the young lady. Oh, did you? Yes, from the the the, the alleged young lady that took um, <clears throat> Alonzo down to the Walmart. Oh my God, I missed it. Yeah, see, my heart is breaking as we speak. You know, <laughs> yes, my heart. Can you just is, briefly still, just go into still, it quickly? Be still, my heart. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> can we can we just do a quick? I'll do a quick please, one. Please, please. Okay, 
So really quick, what happened, and this is, could be also for anybody who missed it in the beginning, but uh, we had some late breaking news delivered to my inbox via Instagram from an anonymous source who I will remain protecting. Um, however, it is straight from Lipstick Alley. Uh, the young lady has spoken out and given her side of the details with Alonzo. She stated that, uh, in fact, she has seen Alonzo and they were in a dating situation. They were intimate. Uh, as well. And uh, she did take him down to the Walmart. And uh, when Patrice uh, encountered them back at the house, she uh, was uh, asked to pretend to be his just one of his homies. She was very upset about that. Um, and she exposed their relationship and the elements of what took place. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the, the, the gist of it. All to say that a woman does exist and it was true. Uh, well, not true as in, but I will say that that they definitely had the encounter at Walmart. So <laughs> that's we can that we can say. I will say. I stand corrected. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that's cool. You know, you go, babe. You go, you go, babe. No, I will say I that. Say. I stand corrected. That was real, but it was still for Louis. Was, there was acting happening here, and no one's getting an Oscar. But um, I stand corrected mm -hmm. on that being a lie. Um, so Patrice, do better. Do better. I cannot protect you any longer, ma'am. <laughs> I can't protect you any longer, ma'am. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that you know what, Patrice. I'm only, I'm only, Patrice is just holding people accountable when she knows she wasn't accountable. That's that's what I'm saying. So it's not that she's not the only one that's not getting smoke. I'm just saying that she deserves some smoke because she was playing in our faces and trying to play the victim in the situation when she knew she had someone in the back pocket. It's like you know. Uh, it's like you cheat on your girl and your girl cheat on you and you try to make yourself a victim, you know? <laughs> like, but you cheat on me. Yeah, but you cheat on my ass too. So what we gonna do? I think we, we're equal. You know what I mean? Like, you know, so yeah. And like I said, that's why the title of the video is they were all a bunch of liars. Cause everybody was lying. You know what I mean? Everybody was lying. Everybody was playing a game. Everybody was there in that. But since you want to play a character, we're going to hold you accountable to that character. So you want to play that character? You go ahead and play that character. We're going to hold you accountable to that character. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't bode well for relationships, but you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but we're we going to bring it to a close. Our time is actually up. Four hours is actually maxed up. So, um, Sean, take us to, uh, to Benediction. We're going to get out of here. Well, you know, uh, I think uh, we have definitely had a great discussion tonight. We're on the end. Uh, we're at the end of our Ready to Love Dallas season. So, you know, shout out to all the folks that have been with us throughout this season. It's been quite a doozy. You know, Coach has some more interviews lined up. So let's just continue to support and listen in to get some of the cast perspective. Right. You know, we want to measure their, you know, their perspective against what we saw because the perspective is important. But also what we saw is important as well. One does not erase the other, just gives clarity. And I think that's what's so important. And that's our message in relationships. We want to take perspective, mix it with behavior, and that helps us to inform our opinion. But we can't do one without the other. We need both. Just like actions are as important as words. Words and actions go together. I think those are some great lessons. And also, I think a bigger lesson that we, especially we're going to lead with the men, we as men, we need to listen to women. We need to be very, very much more understanding of what consent looks like. Uh, we need to look for what is now expressed as enthusiastic consent from our women when we are engaging with them in intimate actions. We should be looking to engage in behavior and intimacy that is mutually beneficial, just like our relationship should be mutual, uh, mutually beneficial and reciprocal. So should the intimate parts of that relationship be as well. Turn it back to you, coach. Yeah, thank you so much, audience members. Uh, we appreciate you guys' support. We had obviously uh, almost a thousand. It was at nine, I think nine fifty. So the fact that you guys turned up for our show on a Saturday um, into into the mornings of the Saturday, Sunday mornings for some of you, then we appreciate you. Well, I should say midnight for some of you. Um, it's much appreciated. Um, we will be back again uh, for some interviews. We got uh, Maya to do next week, and I'm going to fit in Laron. Potentially, might even get Alonso. We'll see. Um, as well um, and I'll try and reach out to Vanessa and see if she wants to do one um, but yeah listen audience thank you so much it's much appreciated uh, thank you for your time and uh, a shout out to Chaz for the super chat 
he'd be supporting. Then bots be working overtime because they knew where he was and his name being mentioned. So we appreciate him. Um, and uh, yeah, listen, we'll continue to uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the festivities. Okay. All right. Don't do too much, guys. All right. Yes. Appreciate you, Laron, as well. I'll see you in the chat, bro. Much love. We always appreciate the support. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Much love. Much appreciation. And uh, yeah, be well.